The following program is a collection of students talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pig! Damn it! <laughs> Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Welcome Back Monday, March 4th, 2024. This sports program starts now. Sports! Are all the way back, and so are we. We missed you greatly. We hope you've had a fantastic two weeks as we have escaped life for a little bit, reset, refocused, and re energized ourselves to take on this offseason in a magnificent fashion. A lot of things have happened since we were on these microphones. We'll obviously address all of that and talk about everything, not only taking place now, then, but also in the future. As we eye the future in the next coming months, we got some big things ready to pop off, and we are so incredibly thankful that we still get to do this for a living. Obviously, I'm not alone, and it's been great to be back in the Thunderdome with these fine gentlemen this morning. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Con man, we'll start with you. You went to the mountains, then you went to Boston. Uh -huh. How was the break, pal? Uh, it was fantastic. You know, it's always fun to, you know, get back to your roots when you, you know, go to Boston, but also ended up skiing a little bit, had, did some snowmobiling, did some sweet. little time Aww. in Denver. Uh, I actually got my Bill Belichick tattoo. That What's I've that? Been waiting. I got my Bill Belichick tattoo. That I've been, I actually, uh, I, I was going to bring it up earlier. I decided not to. It's it's right here. It says, uh, we're on to Cincinnati, William Stephen Belichick. <laughs> I decided, you know what? This guy has made me who I am. Is that real? So yeah, that, that's real. Yeah, I think that those colors don't run, brother. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a real tattoo. Okay. Oh, that's, that's, well, I think. Hey, that's a good surprise pop right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to spoil it, and you know, I, I figured you know, a lot of people probably do have Bill Belichick tattoo. I don't know how many William <laughs> Stephen Belichick tattoos there are out there. So yeah, I got yeah. that done. Where at? Where'd you in get that in Denver? It was a tribe tattoo. A, a man named Justin. And let me just tell you, when you walk. In and, yeah. and you see the guy who's doing your tattoo, and he looks how Justin looks. You just think to yourself, you know, God, God brought me here, okay? Because if that's the guy who's doing it, he just he, he epitomized what I wanted my tattoo artist to look like. So it, it was incredible. What are we talking? We're talking tats everywhere. I'm, talk, I'm talking tats everywhere. Had a fantastic. How's the gauge on the ears? We got big ears. Ears were fine. Oh. The, the nose bridge. This this guy had Hell gorgeous. Yeah. I, I, I could handsome. I assume he's super handsome. White guy. Long dreads, nice. Long dreads. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm not kidding. When I, when I saw them, when I saw the atmosphere that place has, they're showing movies on the wall. Actually, you know, after getting to some talking, they said, "Oh, funny enough, we we have seen your show. Your 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 show has that guy who's always moving around. He's always he's never stopping." And they're talking about you. I was like, "Yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. They're talking about you." <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, "Yeah, that would be that would be the show. Uh, that, that is how it goes." But yes, yeah, so that that was a nice little trip. Only an hour. You know, it was very quick in and out, and, and they they were incredible. It looks like, is that your, that's not your first time. No, it's my second. I mean, to, to be honest, I was like, this is one of those ones that it, it's, it's for me. You know, it, 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 this one's mine. Think about know? the people that are watching along. What did Connor do during his break? Well, he got a we're on to Cincinnati yeah, tattoo. That's right. With William Stephen Belichick. I mean, this is great, great, below. Hair, great writing. Great. Yeah, See, yeah, just, yeah. The guy, the Justin guy, gets it. He's the guy. Yeah, he's clean. the guy over at Tribe clean Tattoo. Lines. Clean lines. He, he gave me a couple different options. That was the one. Are you going to do any arm workouts? We, we kind. Of, oh, believe me. Yeah, I, I, I have made a new deal with myself. There's, I actually came in here yesterday strictly to do arm workouts. I, thought, <laughs> I said, all right, time to time to kind of trim that down a little. Anytime I step, step in the hawk house now, I got to pick something up that has kind of th – this has kind of motivated me. To, I hope that doesn't continue. freak him out, you know, because we're in uh, – we're trying to – I didn't think about that till after. 
Uh, and maybe I should have before, oh, but an honor. I love it. So I, yeah, I think he should He'll love it. Yeah. William Stephen Belichick. Yeah, exactly. His father's name is his middle name. So I, obviously the same name as my father as well. So it was one of those things that I just decided you might as well do it. Is there something misspelled? Is that, is that why you're pointing? <laughs> no, I think the, we got the picture of the tattoo artist. Is that very, oh yeah, yeah. I actually do have a photo of him. I'll, I'll send it to Zeke. Uh, that does not depict who I got as my tattoo artist. That is not the same man. That's Justin. That, that is him. <laughs> However, uh, I, he did not look like this. If he had that pipe, I would have even felt more comfortable. Yeah, you might have uh, got full sleeve. I was yeah. going to say, yeah. I Let's get that, some more quotes. I would bah, be, bah. be <laughs> wrist to shoulder. Uh, the whole well, that's awesome. Quote. I'm happy to hear that happened. And uh, we are still very much in the... We would like to have Bill Belichick a part of our program if he's going to do yeah. any TV stuff yeah. mm -hmm. next year. A couple calls are made during the break. And if he sees this, you know, hey, Bill, we're big fans. Hey, we yeah. Some you. bigger than others, on, but we're big fans. We love you, Bill. Ty Schmidt, I know uh, the last three weeks, right, yep. uh, for you have been long ones. Yes. And I've had the opportunity to – long good, obviously. For sure. But we're excited to get back, eager to, uh, eager to get back. The Iowa Hawkeyes women's basketball team has – captivated the world yeah mm. obviously i've seen you following along with caitlin clark who's now the leading scorer in all of d1 basketball history and we will talk about that in a little bit because it is worthy of a full breakdown of why she's such a beast you went to the dominican republic yep. got a little sunburn mm -hmm. hung out with the family yep. how was your break how are you doing yeah it was it was great it was great again you know a little scheduling snafu uh happens yep happens so i was gone you know that that week after the super bowl people said i sent you to rehab yeah well well, you know, Did you hear that? luckily I that, was not in rehab. Uh, I was people said vacation. that you got fired for saying something. That's what they said. Yeah, oh. you know, I, I saw some of that. Stuff. Some people said the way I said it was uh, seemed like I was upset with Ty. No, actually, just just exactly as we said. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. It, it, it happens sometimes. And again, you know, it, it won't happen again because it was just a, a communication error. I made a mistake, but that's neither here nor there. It was great. It was great. It was nice to kind of just kind of relax and, and, you know, rewind with the family a little bit. Uh, it is crazy. I told you this. Like, anytime you go out of the country, I mean, I guess it's been, you know, since we moved to ESPN, the year removed, like, you forget how, like, there, a lot of people recognized me down there and really? were fans and of the, the show. Dominican Republic. Exactly, wow. which is which is kind of crazy. So, like, that that was pretty cool. Um, so, it was really nice. But, yeah, three weeks being off, like, it, it really did. It felt like two months, three months. Uh, I went back home. To Iowa, saw the family as well. That was nice. Did burst my eardrum on the flight from uh, Indy to Chicago mm. and then had to just kind of eat it from Chicago to Cedar oh. Rapids. Oh, so my God. That wasn't great. I uh, still can't hear out of my right ear, so I'm kind of battling that. But I'll tell you what, waking up this morning, it just felt good. Being back in the saddle. Knowing, you and Drew McIntyre battling yeah, a it, busted it, eardrum. Exactly. Right. And like Drew McIntyre said, you know, I'm not going to – Well, you know, yeah, I felt like I got a clamor kick right in the face. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to whine about it. I'm not CM Punk. So I, w I wouldn't do that. That is what, whoa. That is what Drew McIntyre said. That's okay. not what I'm saying. Um, but, no, it's, it's great to be back. Three weeks is a long time. I was very excited to get back in here with all you guys. And the weather's turning. Yeah, it is. 75 is, degrees today. Exactly. I got shorts on. Exactly. I, I, brought, I brought shorts out. Tank top almost worn today. Yes. <laughs> tank top almost worn today. We're almost in tank top season again. Yeah. A lot of people thought I uh, was forced into not wearing tank tops anymore. It got freezing cold here quick. Yeah. And on the flip side, it feels like it's getting... It's, it's Maybe that dumbass rat, Groundhog. Yeah, that's right. Boy. Maybe Punks at Tawny Phil had it all right all along. Don't mm -hmm. do this to yourself. He said spring's coming early. I woke up this morning. Guess what? Birds chirping. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, a little sun on the face. Uh -huh. It felt great. Yeah. Yeah. 75 degrees? Yesterday yeah. was beautiful. Could spend a lot of time outside yesterday, yeah. actually. Didn't have to wear a coat or a hat or gloves or yeah, anything Yeah, the like wife that. and I and baby, we went out to like a little plaza, walked around. Exactly. Did the whole thing. Holy Ooh. hell, it's spring right yeah, now. We made it. We did it. Good for us. Yeah. Allergies, though. Allergies are <laughs> the big thing. Uh, yeah, a lot of sniffling, a lot of uh, you know runny noses and that kind of stuff. But again, you know, once the pollen count kind of returns to a normal level, yeah. we're going to be okay. We got about three weeks of of dealing with that kind of stuff, and then we're gonna, and then we're smooth sailing. Good for us. I hope this isn't a fake like spring. It is. It no, is. it's not. Yeah. Why are you going to say that? This is number one. Okay, this always happens two to three times. Hopefully, that rat little. Punk's Tawny Phil maybe got it right. I don't think he did, but just be prepared for the 30 to 20 we degrees we have on the horizon. Still not allowed to say the F word? Yeah. Okay. Only third hour. Only third okay. hour. Only third hour. Just making sure. Yeah, that guy. That, that rat, I agree. The relationship I've had with that punk's 
a Tawny Phil. Mm -hmm. Has been up and down as a kid, growing up in Pennsylvania. Obviously, we're taught, Punk's Tawny Phil, Groundhog Day, this is fun, this yeah. is cool, this is cool. Yeah. Then as you get a little bit older, you're like, why am I letting a rat bring negativity into my life? Okay, whenever you live in a four-season city, it's like we are looking forward to the sun mm -hmm. coming back out. Yeah. I don't need something that lives in a damn hole coming up, going back down whenever there's 10,000 people around it with flashes telling me that, oh, we're, don't, winter's staying for a long time. It's like, I don't need that in my life. No. So once I started having a sound mind and brain and reason, I started hating that thing. Yes. Okay, because every year, long winter, long winter, what? long winter. What? Well, you saw a shadow. No shit. There's 10,000 drunks that have been out there since 2 a.m., you don't think that little piece of trash <laughs> is going to get scared and run back in its hole? Of course. of course it is. This year, though, spring's coming early. And you maybe, know what? Maybe Punk's spot on. He might have a chance to win me back <laughs> yeah, over. Maybe spot and on. I think he has. I'm back on it. What have you done for me lately, Punk's Tawny Phil? And this might be a new one because there was a little couple conspiracies about potentially the sure. death of a previous. Sure. Yep. You know, because they started looking to say, is that a clone? Mm -hmm. Like Ugga? Like an Ugga. But, yeah. uh, yeah, but, but I think Ugga down at the University of Georgia, mm -hmm. they announced when the new one's coming. Yeah. Correct. I think this was like a, uh, like just. Like a Pope situation? Yeah, like new character. Just yeah. nobody yep. even knows. Mm -hmm. Just clone. Yeah. Replacement. It's still Phil. Yeah, Phil, Phil, Phil. He still reads the weather, that <laughs> whole thing. But I want to let you know, I think he's right with the spring. It's been fantastic. Speaking of fantastic tone, you're continuing to look better and better thank as you, the days you. go by. <laughs> One half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys tone digs. Also in the Dominican. Yeah, also went down to Dominican. We did not cross, cross pass, uh, but went down there for a few days. Got some sun, some R&R. &R. Did meet some people that were fans of the show. They were great people. Shared some drinks together. Uh, got some daddy to do list done when we were at home uh it was great you know it, it's great just to like kind of step away from the internet because the internet can be a toxic uh, place sometimes yeah uh, i mean the block was hot too as we were wrapping up yeah, our uh, yeah, right. fall season big shout out to all the smoke boys having yeah. me on yep Thank you to that whole entire team. Obviously, that was uh played during the break mm -hmm. and uh, they were incredibly kind to me that was filmed the last thing I filmed before break yeah. was all the smoke. Uh, NBA All-Star Weekend here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And then we all kind of went our separate ways and everything like that. Had a blast. Enjoyed the hell out of the two weeks. Got a chance to hang out with the family. I was incredibly thankful for that. My baby girl and I hung out more than we have been able to hang mm -hmm. out basically since she's been born. Mm -hmm. So I loved it all. We are pumped and thankful to be back. I am white. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes, sure. you are. That's just a matter of fact. I don't know why everybody made a... I don't think that's that big of a deal. If nope. people were waiting for me to make a statement about it, I'm a white. I mean, that's a white guy. I, I am. That is, uh, that that is, is fact. I don't think it's that big of a deal. We move on. Speaking of moving on, we are in the middle of a beautiful time yes, for are. the NFL right now. So many rumors and stories. It may be false, you know, yep. oh, things yeah. being spread. And the things that are being spread might be spread by teams that actually like the player. Yeah. We are in the middle of ruin somebody's life and image season because we're hoping that that'll draw another team into not drafting them so they could potentially fall to our particular team. We can't believe anything. We'll have Adam Schefter on in about 19 minutes. And right now, obviously, not only with Adam Schefter, but with everybody in the NFL community, with the passing of Chris Mortensen, it's a tough mm -hmm. time. Chris Mortensen was kind to every human that he encountered, including us. Very thankful that I've got a chance to know him. Him, meet him, and he was very nice to all of us. But we'll talk to Adam Schefter in a little bit just to hear what he's hearing, the rumors that he's hearing. But we're in rumor season right now. Uh, yeah. Big time. We'll talk to Mad Mel Kuyper in the third hour about what he learned nice. whenever we were at the Combine. But we got a chance to stop by this past weekend, and there's a little bit of a pop for the boy Mad Mel if you listen for it. And that's the fans getting the reaction. Big old Pat. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> He is a big fan favorite here. Thank you, Rich. Mad Bell. There's a little oh, pop yeah. there. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. A little pop there for Mad Bell. <laughs> Did you hear that? I heard it. I heard it. But getting a chance to go to the Combine, uh, we got a chance to walk around, and we'll get Mad Bell's take in the third hour, but we got a chance to, like, walk around, and it's awesome. I never experienced it the way that I experienced it on Saturday where Rich Eisen actually invited us in and I did a hit on NFL Network. Very gracious for them having me on during the coverage. Did not have to do that, but in return, got like an all-access pass. So I'm just walking around Lucas Oil Stadium and all these teams have these suites. This is the Buffalo Bills suite. Every team has a suite and then they have an interview suite. So they have a watch the field suite mm. and then normally there's an interview suite as well. So it's kind of like their home, their office for the entirety of the NFL Combine, which ends today with specialists working out. Good luck to all of them but as you go we're just walking literally through the suite section poking our head in to see what team it is do we know anybody in here 
No, I don't think so. So we go to the next one. Oh, do we know anybody? Yeah, we do know somebody in here. Boom, we'll go talk to Doug Peterson. Mm -hmm. We'll go into the Houston Texans suite, and we'll let them know that they need to be looking for all the terrible players, all the cancers that could potentially ruin an entire locker room. Those are the guys that you guys need to be drafting mm -hmm. for not only this year, but the next 10 years, mm -hmm. because your team got too good, too quick. There has to be some sort of penalty. Find the shitty players, get in there. So we got a chance to walk around, meet everybody, chit-chat with everybody, and it's fascinating to listen to the people who are actually making decisions. Chit-chat about the coverage about the people players. and what the decisions are going to be made. The Chicago Bears are obviously the topic of conversation right. with everybody. Adam Schefter will be joining us in 16 minutes. Was on Pardon My Take. Barstool Big Cat on at Barstool Big Cat. Dan Katz, massive Chicago Bears fans, Bear fan, puts the pressure on Schefter and basically says, what's going to happen? And he says, like, pretty much the Bears are taking Caleb Williams. Yeah. Let me tell you what I have heard about Caleb Williams. Okay. Him not throwing, no big deal. Andrew Luck didn't throw. Joe Burrow didn't throw. Kyler Murray didn't throw. I think RG3 actually didn't throw. And if you go way back, Peyton Manning didn't throw. Now, Whoa. Patrick Mahomes threw. Tom Brady threw. C.J. Stroud threw. Right. A lot of Lamar Jackson threw. A lot of people that have had success have also thrown. Like, I think Drake May should have thrown, personally. Because he's like three. Is he? Is he two? Boy. Who knows? Is he four? Is he five? Because mm -hmm. J.J. McCarthy's moving. Mm -hmm. We're big fans of Drake May. From what Darius Butler said about hanging out with him, like he's a competitive dude. I was hoping that Drake May would say, I'm not going to throw. Get on the field. Kind of see what everybody's doing. You know what? I am. Yeah, I am going to spin it a little bit. I was hoping that would take place. He didn't. He'll have his workout. Nobody's holding it against him. You just kind of keep it moving. But with Caleb Williams, what I've learned is, hey, this dude loves ball. Whoa. That's what everybody has said, mm -hmm. that they come out from talking to him. Now, his teammates are saying the same thing. People are saying the same thing. It's like, obviously, there's going to be a lot of talk about a guy who's being heralded as one of the greatest prospects in the history mm -hmm. of the NFL, especially whenever he's playing in Los Angeles. He transfers to USC. He's already won a Heisman. He is who he is. He's very independent. There's going to be people that talk about him because this is the NFL's next one, potentially. But everybody said, like, his competitive drive, how much he loves ball is going to be the thing that nobody's really talking about publicly that is the reason why he is the can't miss prospect at number 1. Now he's 6 foot 1 he said, 6 foot 2, yep. 215, 205 chose not to do any of the medical which could potentially slow up the Justin Fields trade potentially out of Chicago because are they certain that Caleb Williams is okay? Is there a reason he didn't do the medical? Is there something wrong that people don't find? Who knows. But the thing that I got from damn near everybody around there was like Caleb Williams loves ball and that is all anybody seemingly cares about. Ty, your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's just interesting, too, because you look at all the stuff that people were saying, and, and it's one thing, you know, that you hear about. Us, too. We were wondering. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. And you and you hear about, like, his personality and, like, oh, is this guy kind of standoffish? Is he very L.A. and, like, all about the glitz and the glamour and kind of not, not everything else? But just based on what you saw on Twitter and what he did do at the Combine, like, stand-up guy, you know, didn't give off the impression. Again, you know, it's a job interview, so it's not you'd have to be kind of crazy to go in there and just be a prick to everyone. But some of these guys in a position, like, absolutely could do that. But he was, you know, it gave off the – or exuded the vibe like, hey, this guy could be the 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 one to run a franchise. Like, he's, he's, a, he's a good dude when – Leading up to it, like, that's kind of all it's been so far. You just mentioned Diva it. Baggage. Yeah, character assassination. Like, you know, and again, is that something where your other teams are trying to get him to maybe drop down so they can get him at two or three or wherever? We'll find out. But in terms of not throwing, it seems like he won the combine as much as he could for what he did decide to do while he was there. Now, we saw Peter Schrager tweet there about him sticking around and shaking everybody's hands that ran the event. That's like Colts equipment managers. Every time you see a guy get hit in the face, that's Powers. <laughs> He's been an equipment manager uh, uh, for the Colts for a long time since my time back there. Frog T, everybody's kind of running the drills. The last player, he shook everybody's hand. Okay, so you say that's choreographed bullshit. All right, maybe. Laura Rutledge then puts out a tweet says, hey, whenever you stop by NFL Live, Literally shook everybody's hand on the set. Well, that's just bullshit. Eh, maybe. I don't know. Robert Mathis from Gridiron Gang, he posted a picture, and he said Caleb Williams, when he was in town, came and met with some high school kids that are currently in the Gridiron Gang uh, Academy, pretty much, which I am very lucky to be a part of. I give $100,000 in sponsorships and scholarships to guys to go work out with Robert Mathis and Dan Muir, who are giving pro-level camps to people that would have never had the opportunity to have those types of camps. Caleb Williams stopped by, so it's like Coming to Indianapolis, aside from not doing a medical, not doing a workout, and even if it is all bullshit, at yeah. least he's putting in the effort yeah. to do all the right things. Right. And if he's going to do that as a quarterback in the NFL, it's like, 
even if it's all bullshit, if he's putting in the effort to do all the right things, I'm cool with it. Because you can see those and you can say, well, that was all choreographed, premeditated. That's not real. It's like, well, at least he's doing all the not real shit. Hey, that's get it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. like, yeah, like this is good news to me in my eyes. And I think Caleb Williams, from my preconceived thoughts about mm -hmm. like, shut up, dude. Yeah. You know, a lot sure. of that. Yeah, Whenever he's, when it's team and his family were yeah, saying, team. he won't go to these teams. He won't do this. It's like, bro. There's been a lot of Heisman winners who have come into the NFL. Mm -hmm. There's been 100-plus years of NFL football. Ratings are higher than ever. There's no offense. There has been a Caleb Williams or three or ten that have come through the NFL before. That was my initial thoughts when you hear the family speak. But from everything that Caleb Williams has done, and who knows if the family has even said the things in the right. context in there which they know. have been yeah. relayed. It's like, I'm a big fan of the guy, and I can't wait to see what happens with him. He D.C. guy. Mm -hmm. Commanders are at number two. Mm -hmm. They're thinking there's a chance that the commanders are going to try to like sell everything to go get them at one. But Cliff. from my learning, from my experience, big weekend for Caleb Williams, the human, as opposed to Caleb Williams, the diva, which is potentially some people's thoughts beforehand. Yeah, and like what Ty said, like the character assassination, like I think the reaction to all those things shows how much damage was already done to him. Like from his last mm -hmm. game till now, and like it, you're telling me he went to Robert Mathis and he was like, get your phone out, bitch, take a photo. So, <laughs> so everyone can see me with these high school kids like I don't think that's what he's doing but even just him messing around like I think Brendan Rice he was on the podium yeah. and he was given you know his interviews as all the players do and Caleb Williams went into the crowd and like asked him a question just screwing around like who even his dad that kind of yeah like just joke yeah who his, who his father was like even just joking around like stuff like that I feel like is huge and like for him too it, it feels like a done deal like this is over. All the all the BS that came with Caleb and everything like that. Like, excuse me, one for uh, one, one for one. Uh, I, I wasn't trying to spin it. That was just me moving it. I wasn't trying to spin it. You cannot count that as me dropping the pen on a spin. I was just moving it. But with that being said, Connor always played drums on a microphone. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't he like to. Double bass. No, I, I, double bass. <laughs> I don't like to do it. Now this is new. You, so new Connor. Connor. Yeah, exactly. This is this is. 2023 season, Connor, okay? And granted, the season really doesn't end until the draft, but we're on to 2024, okay? It is a whole different time. I'm not going to drop the pen. Forget about it, okay? But it does feel like Caleb's done, right? Like, this, he is the first overall pick. Uh -huh. There will be stuff. I mean, it's March 4th from now till April 29th. There will be things that, you know, have him fluctuate. We need to remember that so that if he ever becomes plus odds, gambling-wise, we, we, we can yep. hammer him because that happened last year with Stroud and Bryce Young. If you remember where Stroud was the heavy favorite and Bryce Bryce Young was plus money. Granted, who knows how that is. Yeah, like one of these pro days. If Jaden goes out, yes, and it is massive. Bingo. And then Caleb something, you know, comes Some, out. Sure. Yeah. Oh, something comes <clears> out, <throat> and people start leaning like, oh, maybe Jaden, who wasn't supposed to be top pick, is now the top guy, and the sports books bite on it. Let's remember that. Hammer Caleb. Let's remember that it's Caleb. Yeah, because he's the guy. Unless it, something medical-wise does come out, right. which could be legit, which happens. Well, and to that point, you had mentioned it about him not doing it at the combine, and that could slow some things up. But I saw this morning that the Bears already put him on a, the top 30 uh, visit list, and they're going to get that out of the way as quick as possible. So it seems like he's going to be there. And Ty was talking about like the whole L.A. thing. Like He transferred there probably be. That's because where that's where his head coach. Yeah, if Lincoln Riley would have went to, to Omaha. Yeah, right. he mm -hmm. chose to go to Oklahoma. Like that's where he chose to win. And then I saw a tweet on the internet which was doing very well about how there's 700 million barbers in LA, and you could and Caleb has not gotten cleaned up. You could tell since the season is ended. He, that man's been at work. Yeah, that, that man's been working on football. I mean, he the, the way they talked about like hey, you should hear the way his teammates <laughs> describe him, like. You know, because they're it's doing huge deal. they're doing interviews with the teammates. They're doing mm -hmm. interviews with like equipment managers. You hear like how athletic trainers talk about this guy. Like the way they're talking about like him is like he's legit. Don't worry about all the he's a superstar. Mm -hmm. Like that is he's going to be the number one pick in the NFL. There's going to be yeah. some sort of shit that's going to come with it. But everything about him, I just hope that he has the ability to play the same way he played in college in the NFL. Now, if he doesn't, he'll just adjust because he's competitive and loves ball. He'll be able to do it. But if he can be as elusive as he was in college ball in the NFL, yeah. and we got big dudes running real fast. Huge. Huge. Real fast. I learned that out of the combine. It's like... I watched it back because we went down there on Saturday, walked around, didn't get to see as many numbers and everything like that. So I watched it back at night. And it's hard not to just be like, so humans are faster than they've ever been. Yeah, so great. humans have just gotten faster. Like that is just, 
somehow, some way, we figured out how to train, how to run, how to get off, what? how to continue. Now, get off. I'm, I'm not talking about. Talk about that. But also, but I'm also not talking place. about sex. There's new ways to do, there are new ways to do that too. Yeah. Well, yeah, every day people are learning new ones. I guess that's yeah. what the internet is. about. New people. But anyways, like everything about them, like the new techniques are evolving. Like everybody is faster now, and. We have the fastest human in the history of the NFL just took yeah. place. Congratulations, yeah. Xavier Warren. Yeah. Woo. Now, he's 160-some pounds, I think, maybe 170 pounds. Ran a 4-2-1 official, 4-2-2 unofficial. He was pumped that he tied the record that Ross had from years ago. Then he would later find out that it wasn't a tie. You actually broke the record. You're the fastest human to ever go through an NFL combine. Now, obviously, there's whole new measures and metrics with the laser timer versus the hand timer. And Deion Sanders, Randy Moss, Calvin Johnson, all right. these guys in the past that are absolute burners. With modern technology and modern training, would Dion be able to run a 419? Like, there's, yeah. we don't know. But what we do know is Xavier Worthy is a rocket ship. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. And if you run that fast, speed kills matchups, you will find a home. And we want to let everybody know he can track a ball. We were front row to watching this dude catch like a 60 yard ball that was coming down like a bottle rocket in a big time tud right in front of our face as we were on the megacast. Same celebration. Mm -hmm. Come down here. Come down here. Did we talk about the long ball? Did we talk about the long ball? Was that money? Was that money? Was that money? Was that, money? Was that right there? Yeah. All right, Dev. Live in front. Touchdown horns. Hey. Hook them, baby. Unbelievable. Watch this replay, Matt. Oh, what a beautiful. fucking shot. Wow. Watch Kirk Herb should break it down in the bucket. So high Look at this pocket. Sky. Look at the blocking, uh, too, from the O line. Look at all of our dumb. We almost got hit by humans there. Uh, 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 hey, this is alumni section. First and 10. Shot to Xavier Ward. Great shot from Quinn. Um, the, we got a chance to watch his speed in person, yeah. mm -hmm. and him tracking that ball was phenomenal. But history shows us that mm -hmm. being the fastest in the combine, not necessarily a. Uh, a home run, you're going to be a success in the NFL, Con. No, actually, we the Patriots just drafted uh, two years ago the fastest wide receiver in the NFL. And he, he was a little bigger. I think he, Tyquan Thornton, I think he's 6'1", 6'2", but he has the small frame. Uh, he When he's playing, he, he's been incredible. Uh, he's gotten very seriously hurt because of the small, tight frame. Do you think it's different because of the fact that, you know, 5'10", maybe you can move him inside, outside a little more? Because Tyquan Thornton, the guy we got, I think he ran a 4'28 or a 4'29. He was the fastest wide receiver at the combine. He was he, He's a little taller, a little, little skinnier. We heard like. Matthew McConaughey say, track it, X. T yep. Score that thing, yep. X. If X gets with, like, an Andy Reid or, yeah. like, somebody that's very creative McVay. and utilizes him in the Tyreek Hill fashion, cool. Tyreek, now... There's some backyard drills going on. Yeah, yeah. Right? Right. yeah we're learning about too yeah. physical. A little bit too. Hey, broken leg. Too much. Anyways, <laughs> so there. If we use him in an offensive system that utilizes his, you can get him open. You can get him away from the jam yeah. coverage, hopefully. But he's also got to be a guy who knows how not to get hit. Yeah. At 160, 170 pounds, he's gonna be taking deep shots. Hopefully, there isn't anything other than like maybe legs being tangled or him getting out of bounds quickly. But we had Philip Dorsett come to the Indianapolis Colts after he ran a 4-2-4, something like that. Mm -hmm. I forget what Damn. it was. He won an island or an Adidas contract. Ooh. I forget what it was. It yeah, was I something. Yeah. I think you could win an I think they bought an island. John Ross won, won an island. I think, yeah, Dorsett, I think, got the Adidas contract, and then they upped it to, to an, an island. island. Yeah. yeah, whatever. It used to be for the fastest 40. Philip Dorsett came to our team, but we already had T.Y., and T.Y. Hilton was very fast, like the same exact yeah, yeah. position almost. I don't think Philip Dorsett ever really got like a, a real push with us. Mm -hmm. They thought he was going to be able to be a returner because he was super fast. I don't think he ever returned in college or anything like that. So it wasn't necessarily his bread and butter. Saw him do some magical things, uh, you know, in practice. He'd go up and get it on some guys. But for us, it just never clicked. He would end up going. He's think he's still playing. Incredible athlete, mm -hmm. incredible guy. So I don't like the fact that he necessarily gets lumped into like, hey, fastest guys didn't work out because I think Phil Dorsett, if he would have landed in a situation 
where he would have been used yes. as the guy, I think he would have had smashing success. The NFL seems much more suitable now for ridiculous speed yeah. than maybe it was even 10 years ago. So congrats to X who said, you know, business handled was his tweet. I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say you break the NFL combine record, your NFL future for the least the first three years is going to be a lock. And from everything I've been told, great energy, great personality, great human. Well, and to your point too, like if he ends up, if he goes to a team like the Chiefs, you know, where it's the he's the last pick in the first round and he's a, he's on an established team already where he doesn't have to be the number like John Ross I think was a top 10 pick when he came out like clearly I mean he's super fast obviously but wasn't ready to be the number one guy right away hey we need you to go out and have a thousand yards your first year like it doesn't sound like that's going to be his situation if he does go to a team like the Chiefs like they have Mahomes they have Kelsey they have Pacheco they're not expecting him to come in and be like hey you got to be the engine that kind of makes this thing go like but but if he if he gets open, yeah, he he can still. What a I mean, great third fourth option, exactly. Rashid Rice, right? exactly. Guy runs a four yeah, two Rice. one or whatever. I was looking at yeah. mock this morning. He was mocked to the Chiefs. Obviously, that's where they, he's going to. They immediately, have yeah. Andy Reid sees that and goes, "All right, well, figure yeah. this out. Can he catch a ball? Can he? Do we know if he can catch? Because yeah. our guys last year didn't catch. We still won right. a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Can he catch a ball? And mm -hmm. then they show that exact clip, and he's yeah. like, yeah. "All right, well." That's who we're going with and in this entire thing. And if he's two for five catching balls in games, you know, there's a chance two of them are going for 80-yard touchdowns. So, so you know. fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So much hope and, like, optimism with that type of speed. Oh, yeah. It Everyone. hasn't worked out every single time. Mm -hmm. No. But yeah. we think it will going forward. Yeah. Hopefully. The wideouts were – I mean, the wideouts, like, the wideouts and offensive line this weekend, they, like – How about Devondre everyone Sweat? Oh, oh man, he's 366 pounds. He's a That's absurd. Mountain of a man. How can he run in general? Doesn't make sense. I don't understand any of it. But he can't. He looks clean. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was just striding clean. out clean at 366 pounds. Then Joe Alt runs a 5 0 something. Yeah, yeah. that he, guy's a mountain. He stride will never run 40 yards in his life. Uh, no, now, unless he maybe scoops a fumble. Yep. And then all of a sudden he's striding out knees like this though. We're yeah. talking. Oh yeah. Perfect form at what six whatever six, eight, six, eight, 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 yeah. whatever he. The athletes these days are just bananas. It, it makes no sense to me. How about Fisk? Is that his name? The Florida yeah. State kid. Yep. Yeah. Fisk? The he's D lineman. Fly Chop Robinson? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. 4 3 something. Like. These dudes are. That's, that's what I'm talking about with Caleb. Like, if Caleb's able to do. I, I think Caleb will be able to adjust. From what I heard this weekend, Caleb will figure it out because mm -hmm. he's so competitive. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be a, like... Of course. He's not going to want to be a guy that's viewed as not living up to the hype. Mm -hmm. B-word. From what I've... Yeah, I'm not yeah, saying, don't even yeah. say it, yeah, but we know it. it. But allegedly, he will compete to not never let that happen, which is what people are looking for. But, like, dudes in the NFL are just so fast. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, it seems like people are faster than they've ever been. Joining us now is a man who might have some more information on the happenings around the NFL. Ladies and gentlemen, NFL senior insider for ESPN, Adam Schefter. Yay! Yay! Shefty, before we dive into what you learned at the Combine, we would like to express extreme, obviously, like yep. positive love uh, about the passing of Chris Mortensen. He was incredibly kind to us and nice to us, but obviously we were nowhere near as close to him as you were. I assume this is a hard time for everybody. What an absolute legend, Shefty. What an absolute legend this entire thing. He was the best, Pat, and uh, our thoughts and prayers are with his wife, Mickey, his son, Alex, and those are the first people you think of uh, when you hear of his passing, and it's just wild because, you know, he had been through so many tough situations and had come out of them on the other side. And there were many times where we thought he was in grave danger. And you know, as recently as like December, he had battled through pneumonia this year, was in the hospital. He'd been in the hospital a couple of times, but he had come out and seemed to be doing pretty well. Like we spoke this past week more than I did. He sounded good. He texted. We have a chain among some co-ESPN workers, and he texted us Saturday night, 7.46 p.m., was part of the chain. And then you get the news on Sunday that he's gone. Like, that was not when I was expecting him to go. Uh, you knew that he was fighting with all he had, but honestly, he seemed to be doing well. And that's why it was so shocking and devastating because, you know, you think that there would be some – warning with something like this where you know, you'd have a chance to go spend time with him and make some peace with him and get a chance to thank him and tell him how much you love him and appreciate him and it didn't go like that and so very sad uh like i said i think most of all for his family but there are so many people at espn that cared about him that loved him 
who he impacted. There are many people in your life that single-handedly change the trajectory of your career as he did for mine. You know, without his support, blessing, recommendation, I would not have been at ESPN 15 years ago. And I think um, he was 42 when he started at ESPN as I was, and he was 57 years old when ESPN hired me, and I'm now 57 when he's gone. And so there's a lot of like symmetry and parallels and a guy like that has meant so much to so many that he will always be missed and always be remembered. Thank you for saying that. And more, rest in peace. You've done good, Bob. You're echoing the sentiments of a lot of people that got a chance to know him. Obviously, the Manning family was very close to him, so I got a chance to meet him yeah. whenever Peyton was playing back here a couple of times. And everybody that he has encountered seems to say the same exact story. And I know for you, working with him, tough. So thank you for that. As we move forward here now yeah. in the middle of combine season, draft season, free agency, tag, franchise tag yeah. season tomorrow, it's going to be a lot for all of you to deal with as you go forward. But we appreciate you. And we appreciate everybody behind the scenes. Let's dive into the combine a little bit here now. Uh, obviously, people are faster than ever. Okay, that was the big takeaway. And we have the fastest time of all time. But what is the big story you think coming out of combine? Mine is Caleb Williams, from all the conversations that I've had with people, he's legit, loves football, competitive human being. They say whenever you talk to his teammates, they say the same thing. Equipment managers say the same thing. Is that the big story? What do you think the big story coming out of Indy is, Adam Schefter? I don't know that we could point to any one thing. I always fall back to quarterbacks, Pat, and I always fall back to where they're going to wind up. And you could take that with the quarterbacks in this draft or where the free agent quarterbacks are going to go. We could go with this any which way you want. But I've said all along, I'd be surprised if the Bears didn't go Caleb Williams at once or what happens to Justin Fields. And, and I just, I don't think the market for him right now is as robust as the Bears and he had thought. So that's going to be interesting to see what they do. I know they talked about hoping to move on from him if they were comfortable with a quarterback in this draft, i.e. Caleb Williams, by the start of free agency, which, by the way, opens at this time next week, the tampering period. But let's not confuse the tampering period with the Actual start of Actual tampering, agency. yeah. Yeah, like well, I'm just telling you, this time next week, deals are flying. And free agency, by the time free agency opens on Wednesday at 4 o'clock Eastern, uh, free agencies on the backside of being over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, the tampering period is really the start of the free agent period in which all the deals will be done. The Bears had hoped to say that they wanted to place Justin early on in the process. I'll be curious to see if they can get a deal done in place by next Monday or they have to wait for some of these other quarterback moves to shake out before they can find a home for Justin Fields. So we'll see how that one shakes out. Then, of course, you got Washington at two, New England at three, all the free agent quarterbacks. There are a lot of different opinions on a lot of different quarterbacks in this draft. It certainly sounds like we could get up to six quarterbacks taken in round one, certainly five. Damn. That could happen. Um, there seems to be a mix of opinions. There are people that are huge Jaden Daniels fans. There are people that are huge Bo Nix fans. Oh. Um so we'll see how that shakes out. Washington, I think, I think Washington's going to be open to anything, including moving back in the draft. So there's going to be a team that doesn't get Kirk Cousins. And it certainly sounds like right now Kirk Cousins will have, as his primary two options, primary two options, Atlanta and Minnesota. Mm. Maybe Washington jumps in whoa maybe whoa whoa. Uh, whoa whoa yeah maybe washington jumps in washington uh maybe there's another team but i think i think the two primary suitors for kirk cousins i ex would expect to be minnesota and atlanta there's only one kirk cousins so he goes somewhere what does the other team then do like if he goes to atlanta i wouldn't be surprised if minnesota tried to move up in the draft and tried to make a play up for a quarterback but then you're gonna have guys like Justin Fields out there, Russell Wilson likely out there. You know, Russell Wilson had the one year where he gets tarred for that one year in the bad Broncos year where they wind up firing Nathaniel Hackett. And he's still coming off a year last year where he threw 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions. And you're going to be able to add him without compensating Denver and 
at a very low rate for this year, which makes him, I think, more attractive to another team. So there's a whole host of options, but I always come back to the quarterbacks. That's my default. I'm going to go back there every time. And we see how it shakes out. Okay, let's talk about one of the quarterbacks you didn't talk about. Go ahead, Con man. Yeah, Chef, the uh, Dan Jeremiah moved the sticks during the combine said, hey, let's talk some rumors here. Baker Mayfield to New England, don't sleep on it. Can, can you give us an update there? Is that real? Is New England thinking about using that number three overall pick on, you know, say Marvin Harrison or a Joe Alt instead of a quarterback? And do you see them in the market for some of those guys you just listed, especially Baker? I think Baker could be in play. I think Baker... Uh, is more in play in Tampa, especially now that Mike Evans will be back there. I think Atlanta, if it doesn't get Kirk Ooh. Cousins, mm. will have interest in Baker Mayfield. And I'm not going to tell you that New England is not going to be interested in Baker. I can see it. But I think when we're talking New England, the first two names that come to my mind would be Joe Flacco and Jacoby Brissett. Yes. I could see both those yes. guys in play. Oh my God. Oh in my God. Joe Flack. Joe Flack. Joe Flack up in New England. Footsteps. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Look, this is very simple. Yes. Where, who, who was the offensive coordinator in Cleveland last year? Alex Van Pelt. Oh, where's Alex Van Pelt this year? He's the New England Patriot. I he can't is. believe Flack goes going to New England. Oh, oh, yeah. He just knocked down Charizard. Or maybe a Gary Vemont. Uh, I don't Vemont. know which one it was. But Wait, hold on. Where, where was Jacoby Brissett the year before? Cleveland. Oh. Who was in Cleveland? Oh, Alex Van oh, Pell. Oh. Wow, that's, that, that's really coincidental. As their starter? Could you imagine Joe Flacco and Jacoby Brissett being in the quarterback room up there? Paul. Mac Jones would have no chance to... No. Mess up. I'm Oh, good catch. Hey, good hey catch. I've been on vacation yeah, brain. Come on. All right. Let's Mac go. Jones, get right in line. You got Joey Flack saying, come on, guys. Get the water and all that mm -hmm. and, and do yep. this entire thing. And then Jacoby Brissett telling him how to – I mean, that would be a great quarterback room. We're going to have 15 but, but quarterbacks in New let, let's, let's, let, 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 let's get Connor a little bit more excited, right? Let's let's just play it out and Fire keep him going here. But essentially, uh, it's a situation where – if you sign one of those guys, Flacco or Brissett, Flacco. you still can go ahead and draft one of those other guys at three. And now Boom. you don't have to rush them onto the field. Oh, you can learn from Joey Flack Academy. Wow. The Joey Flack Academy. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. See you guys at the Super Bowl. When, Sorry. 10 years from now? No, tomorrow. Well, I heard about the Super Bowl run you guys had. I have a documentary and you guys don't like it. Oh, you heard about the Super Bowl run? That's funny because nobody else has because they don't talk about it. What are you talking about, in the dynasty? Yeah, in the dynasty. They they decided to say, hey, you know what? They won three Super Bowls in four years. Here is five minutes to explain that entire time. <laughs> yeah, hey, Shefty, Patriots fans are not thrilled about this dynasty documentary. Anybody giving you any information during the show? Because earlier in the middle of one of your answers, you got a text, and I didn't know if they were, like, breaking news to you there, and you just got another text. Do you get breaking news just, like, throughout the entire day or, like, little leaks and little pebbles of things? It, it, it's, uh... Well, that, that we're in that time of the year, Pat. Like this is, this is. Yeah, you get used, Shefty. Hey, narratives get built through Adam Schefter. Okay. Remember, CJ Stroud's at doofus. Yeah. Remember, oh, yeah. remember yeah. that was last I, yeah, year. I never said anything like that. Never said <laughs> that. alluded. Right. Well, somebody did. Somebody did. Somebody yeah, in your position me. did. Not you. I, not hey, me. That baby Shefty. That baby Shefty. Yeah. That baby Shefty Mort taught him better. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Shout out Mort. Yeah, rest of yeah, peace. But by the way, yeah, Mort. Mort. And I knew the deal. Like we went through a lot of that stuff, and 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 had we we were aware of a lot of it. And and you know, at at that at the feet of Mort, you learn to be very careful about some of the stuff that you put out there. Those are that's one of the many life lessons that I learned from my friend, the great Chris Mortensen. And uh, no, we did not say anything like that about C.J. Stroud last year. You will not find anything on the record anywhere that says anything like that. Okay, so what we do have to watch, though, is, like, you have to watch that, right? Right now? You have to really watch what's real, what isn't? How do you kind of cycle through that? Just because you got good sources? It's normally people that are trying to make it or have, like, a source that thinks they know. Like, how do we not get caught up in all the BS this year? Us. We're yeah, talking about yeah. for us, Shefty, not for you. But how do we not get caught up in the shh, 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 shh that happens during draft season about people? You have to understand who you're talking to. You have to understand where the information is coming from. Um, I, I, I'm more of a glass half full guy, Pat. Like, I don't believe that people are trying to dupe you and use you. Like, again, uh, you know, I've done this job now. I've been in this business for 35 years. So, 
I'd like to. I'd like to think that you look good. You years. look good, Shefty. You look yeah, good. Hey, way to go, yeah. Shefty. Moisturizing Thanks. stuff. You look good. Thirty-five years. So uh, I think that you have relationships with people over time that you know either they're going to be honest with you, or if they can't say something, they're just not going to say that. That's it. And so I, I, I never view it as being used. I just that's just not how I view it. Um, and you just got to be careful and selective and smart and recognize that. These kids, there are going to be some people, I guess, that are out to try to drop their stock, try to notch, you know, move them down a few slots. But I, I just think you have to try to stay as grounded in the truth as you possibly can, knowing that maybe it's not always possible. But as long as you are doing the best you can to do that, um, then you'd make more proud. Hey, we appreciate you, Shefty. Honestly, we'll follow your tour account. Yeah, that's yep. right. And... That rap sheet, you know. Well, you guys well, can. Scumbag. Yeah. I'm, I'm opting out of rap sheet. Still You're opting season. out of rap sheet. I'm opting out of rap sheet. How do you feel about that, Chef? Uh, Shefty, how about it? You're yeah. giving him more New England news. Sure. And he's like, you know what? The hell with yeah, rap. Yeah, keep talking about Flacco, Shefty. I mean, only your notifications <laughs> will be on. Uh, Tone Diggs got a question for you about Pittsburgh, yeah. I do believe, Shefty. Yeah, Shefty, so far the uh, quarterbacks that will be starting next year for the Steelers are Justin Fields, Russell Wilson, Bye. Ryan Tannehill, Bye. Kirk Bye. Cousins, Bye. Kenny Pickett, Bye. Mason Rudolph. And, and, a, and a list that good, keeps going on and on and on. A lot of on. quarterbacks. To, it's a lot of quarterbacks to fit under the cap. It's a lot of quarterbacks fit under the cap. Uh, Omar Khan will figure out how to do it. Uh, what are you? Are, what are you? Are they? Are the Steelers actively looking for a replacement for Kenny? For a competition for Kenny? Do you have any idea what's going on uh, as far as that and, and Fields and all of that? They're looking. They're absolutely looking. And I would expect at some point they're going to add one of these guys. It doesn't feel like. They are in an urgent mode to where, boy, we're going to go make this move for Kirk Cousins on day one of free agency and outspend all these guys. I think that they still absolutely have hopes for Kenny Pickett, which I think enters into the decision, the ultimate decision that uh -huh. they eventually make about whichever quarterback they do bring aboard. And so when you're talking about a guy like Justin Fields, who we all know that there are people in that organization that really like him, uh, is it going to be worth whatever they have to give up mm -hmm. for a guy like him to bring him in? Or do they prefer to go sign a free agent like Ryan Tannehill or Russell Wilson where you don't have to compensate the other team? I, I don't think they know right now, and I think they're still sorting through it as we speak. But all these decisions are going to crystallize here over the course of the next week. And I do think they'll add a quarterback. I haven't sensed that they were at in, in the combine, at the combine, going through quarterback meetings – like round the clock to go get somebody in here to dislodge Kenny Pickett. So I'm not giving you a specific answer because I don't think mm -hmm. right now they have a specific answer. I think some of those names you mentioned are in play. Some are more likely than others. I don't expect Kirk Cousins to wind up in Pittsburgh. I do mm -hmm. think that uh, a guy like Russell Wilson or Justin Fields or Tannehill oh. could be in play, and we'll see. Kirk Cousins has a grill now. Mm -hmm. Looks awesome. I saw that. Yeah. got measured up. He looks good. I'm excited yep. to see where he's at. I assume Minnesota really wants him. But back to Pittsburgh. Didn't Artie Smith and Kenny Pickett have a meeting down in Florida? Oh, okay. yeah. Uh -huh, that happened, right? Yeah. Yeah. Bestest of friends. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. He has no mustache, right, Artie? That's not yeah. good. Yeah. Artie's got no. we got a long time before the season starts. I mean, he uh, better start growing it. Better get on it. Yeah, he better get on it. Yeah. we got an update with Matt Bell coming in the third hour. Can't wait to hear his thoughts. Ty, your question for Shefty. Yeah, Shefty, it seems like they do this every single year, and we kind of fall victim to it, where they talk about how many trades are going to be in the first round of the draft. But considering how many teams are quarterback needy, and there's going to be several teams kind of left out of the musical chairs of the free agent quarterbacks right now, and you mentioned Minnesota, if they kind of get left out being one of those teams who moves up, do you anticipate? that we're going to see a lot of movement on draft night of teams kind of jockeying into the top 10, top 15 to get one of those five or maybe six quarterbacks yeah. who are going to get drafted in the first round? I, I don't I don't know that you, we could say that just yet. I, I just think it's too far out, and every year we get a whole host of trades. It heats up usually around the quarterbacks, and so uh, somebody that doesn't get those top three rated quarterbacks uh, certainly could be moving up for Bo Nix or J.J. McCarthy or maybe Michael Penix somewhere on the middle to the back end of the first round. We'll see how that goes if that winds up happening. There are always moves. I just think it's a little early. Like, we have to see where Kirk Cousins goes, where Russell Wilson goes, where Baker Mayfield goes, where Justin Fields goes, where Ryan Tannehill goes. What? There's a, a lot of quarterback questions that we have to get through 
before we can forecast whether it's going to be active on draft night with teams moving up or back for quarterbacks. All right, let's talk franchise tag real quick as we let you go. Obviously, that deadline coming upon us mañana. I think we have what? Uh, T. Higgins got tagged over there in Cincinnati. Sneed going to get tagged. Allegedly, Chris Jones' deal is going to get figured out with Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Brian Burns' negotiations have stopped, but maybe he can still get franchise tagged down in Carolina. Any big names that are going to pop up out of nowhere? And uh, for Kansas City, that Chris Jones deal is done because he was drunk on a stage saying he's coming back for three years? It's not done yet, but they'd like to get it done. They'd like to bring him back. And we're talking about I think that they would be surprised if it didn't get done. But the other tags that are out there, Brian Burns will get tagged in Carolina. Okay. Josh Allen will get tagged in Jacksonville. Yes. Michael Pittman will get tagged in Indianapolis. Justin Matabike will get tagged if they don't get a deal done. There's four tags right there, right? In addition to Snead, who already got tagged, and T. Higgins. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody right now. Tampa has the ability to use its tag on Antoine Winfield Jr. If there's no tag there as well, be another pot- potential tag possibility. There's a good group of guys right there that we won't be far off on altogether. Hey, I appreciate you, Shefty, for that. Uh, you heard him celebrate whenever Josh Allen was tagged down in Jacksonville, because that means Calvin Ridley probably going to hit the market. Yep. Uh, Calvin Ridley is going to command a lot of money in the wide receiver market, especially in the modern NFL. Although, you talk to people at the Combine, young wide receivers, oh, yeah. Plus, much right. better, quicker. You know, So, the premium high-end OGs like Calvin Ridley is, and I assume a lot of NFL people will, will get their money, but that middle... You know, if you're an older wide receiver in the middle, I think you're going to get phased out. And then there's going to be young guys. I think that's going to be how that goes, but not for Calvin Ridley. And then um, whenever you talk about Michael Pittman Jr. getting tagged for the Indianapolis Colts, I believe it's on the record. Uh, they they think there's still a chance a deal gets done with Michael Pittman as well, yeah. right? In that, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, all these yeah, people. A lot, all, all those guys that we mentioned, I'm sure their teams will push for deals uh, by the deadline. I don't know if we'll get anyone. Maybe Michael Pittman could get a deal done by the deadline. I, I don't know about that. Justin Matabike, the Ravens have been working on trying to get that done. Uh, Brian Burns, I don't think we'll get a deal done by the time the deadline comes, nor Josh Allen. Um, but th- those are the Winfield could get a deal done by the deadline, potentially, I guess. Like, There's been a lot of conversation about some of these guys, but those are the tag guys you're looking at here, Pat. You're the man. We appreciate you. Get some rest and also, you know, Thank you so much for that tribute about Mortensen. You know, I think Mm -hmm. the world need to hear that. And the most important thing, I think, about somebody's existence is how those who know you talk about you. And I think what everybody has said about Mort has echoed your sentiments, which we lost a damn good one. Mm -hmm. We're thankful for you, though, Bob. We want to let you know that. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I appreciate having me. We'll look forward to all the fun ahead here in the next week or so. No bullshits. Please. Any of these narratives. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got you got to you got to be smart about it. You got to understand what you're dealing what you're dealing with, and uh, you guys are good. You, you'll figure it out. Well, we're, we'll we're banging on you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Schefter. Thank you, Adam Schefter. Hey. Yeah, I mean, this is not good for us. Yeah, we're not supposed to be the ones. Why do you say you are good at it? It's yeah, like, hey, buddy, we're a dog chasing a piece of meat. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Dude. Right, 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 right. Wait, wait, wait. Well, we heard this, boom. We heard this, bang. We heard that. Whoa, that must change all that. Then draft day, we get a text message. Hey, everything you've been saying for the last two months, completely wrong. Tonight's going to be this. Then the odds change like a thousand points mm-hmm. yeah. immediately upon us saying that. People know, you know, if you if you can get the proper narrative out there, that could potentially drop somebody's draft stock publicly. Mm-hmm. Well, a couple GMs that we spoke to said, if any general managers are listening to anything anybody in the media is saying, they need not be general managers anymore. Okay. Yeah. Because I asked a few that we were getting a chance to talk to and hang out with. I'm like, like that CJ Stroud thing that took place last week, last year. How do I know if something's just like complete bullshit? Just like what I asked Schefter, because I don't want us to be a part of it. Sure. Nope. Like these are kids' dreams. This is their lives. They work their entire lives for this. Now, I'm not saying they're not paid. Caleb Williams made $10 million the last two years at USC. Pretty sweet. So I'm not saying their lives haven't already been changed, but like making it to the NFL, this is a dream. I don't want to be a part of any you know, illusion to work anybody. So I started asking him, it's like, uh, none of us are paying attention to any of the stuff going on. And if they are, should not, they won't be in our seats yeah. for too long. So what I'm hearing is everything that's talked about media wise, although it might be accurate, is not heard by anybody that makes actual decisions. So good to know. that is good to know. Yeah, relevant. So 
we're not ruining dreams by saying if we happen to be a part of something that is absolute no. bullshit is what I heard Correct. immediately to these GMs that I was talking to. Well, it also goes to like how we have always viewed the draft because of how you view the draft. Like, who knows? About any of them. Any, I mean, you could take even the lock that everyone, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be a superstar Hall of Famer. Like, there is still a chance that he isn't. Mm -hmm. in, I in, doubt I doubt as well. Same yeah, with Joe Wall. There's Walt. a chance. But there is a chance. There's a chance, you know, but you still have to you have to still kind of like not just support but kind of like celebrate what these kids have accomplished because it is so unbelievable. You start looking at the percentages of who makes it and who's considered a bust mm -hmm. and everything like that, it's like there's a lot more that don't make it than do make it, yes. which is why the NFL's ratings are only going up and up. Yeah. You got to be a real dude, not only physically, but mentally. A lot of people can run fast. A lot of people can maybe throw a ball far, mm -hmm. but do you know where to put the ball, when to put the ball, how to put the ball, and whenever the lights are the brightest and the dudes that are chasing you are the biggest, strongest, fastest they've ever been, can you perform? All that, you can't know until the time comes. And it's like, let alone the money in your pocket, but now you got some free time as well. How do you handle that? Do you get better? Do you get worse? It's like so many guessing games. So much of it now is orchestrated at the Combine. Mm -hmm. Pro days even, I'm hearing. Oh, yeah. Mm. So these pro days that we all like, you know, well, guys will throw out their pro days. They've all kind of just become like a rehearsed practice. Yeah. Like you hear oh. some of these, you know, scouts talk. They're like, pro days used to be a lot better because we used to be able to be like, okay, we want you to do this now. And, like, out of nowhere, we want you to do this. Now the pro days for quarterbacks, at least, Script. are being run by the quarterback guru. Yep. And they've done that 15, yeah. that exact Last drill few months. 15 times. So it's like the, the scouts and the, the people that are making the decisions, it's like even pro days are hard to, wow. to get a good read on if somebody's somebody or not. It's like their jobs have gotten more difficult, I think, even though we have more information now. It's like it's it's difficult to find who's going to be a guy and who's not. You can say this, though. With all that scripting and all that practicing, your pro day better look really, really good. Bingo. Okay. Yeah. If it looks bad, that's that says a lot. But, like, yeah, with this, this week coming up, I had a reminder in my phone to block or mute all of the, all the accounts that – you know, you can't trust fully. You know, let's just stick to Ian. Let's stick to Shafty. Let's stick to the guys that you know are double checking, triple checking, and maybe not. And they might be wrong. Of course. They, they might get gut. Sure. Things change. But 35 years of sources and rap, he looks like he's 12, but he's been in it Long 15, time. 20 years yeah. probably mm -hmm. at this point. It's like they know, but boy, those rumor accounts on Twitter, they're going to eat. Yeah, this oh, is yeah. their season. This is their Super Bowl. Yeah. This there you is. Go. I cannot wait to see heartbreaking colon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we heard Huge. while eating a burrito of course. in his college time, he did not use a napkin to wipe his mouth. Whoa. Now people are wondering, mm -hmm. is he professional enough to be in the NFL? Damn. That's a shame. Mm -hmm. With a picture of like sad face. Yeah, like, yeah. And it'll just uh -huh. get retweeted by and then all of a sudden it's like is that guy a prick? What did he? What's going on here? He wiped his hand with his face. How, how, about, that, how about that Dylan Lube kid? Oh, that was yeah. incredible. Come down, suck it in the middle of the thing. UNH superstar. He, I mean, he's lived in New Hampshire. Are you kidding me? He's got live for your die probably Bingo. running through his veins. You want that Okay, guy. yeah, because I was on the air when it happened, and Rich Eisen said New Hampshire product, and I almost said live for your die, but I didn't remember if it was New Hampshire or Rhode Island. Of course, yeah, yeah, they get mixed up together, but yeah, it is New Hampshire. I didn't want to get it. It was right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was right there about to come in. I hope that I helped him out because immediately upon seeing it, I said, I want that guy on our team. Mm -hmm. Like, is this stock up or stock down? Way up. It's up. Through the roof. If you're a guy that nobody knows exists, they come out, run well, do an entire thing, and then in the camp, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you're Boom. doing it. It's like, that guy's going to be a special teams demon right there. Uh -huh. That Now, granted, he's going to get some carries. I assume he's going to get some carries for a team. But that's a human I would like to see covering a kickoff, which is getting new rules. Ooh. Yeah. Kickoff is going to stay, though. Yes. Which is good news. Good rules. Feels like the special teams coordinator, Coach Riz, down there in uh, New Orleans, pieced it together alongside a couple other OGs, presented it to the owners who are going to vote on it. But it feels like we're not getting the Bush League amateur Thank XFL God. kickoff. And we are getting an answer, and the foot is staying in football. Don't love that there's no surprise onside kicks anymore. Yeah, that's mm – -hmm. come on. A couple of us OGs, Seabass, Akers, yeah, Mason dude. Crosby, mm -hmm. myself, love those. That's Mickey Mouse. But it's all right, kickoff still around. Hour two on the other side. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice.
There is a crowd of about 30 people moving through the back end of the business field here. And in the middle of it is this black Samoan man who has become the most famous human on earth. Great guy. Ladies and gentlemen, the GOAT, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. There's thousands and thousands of people skipping class to come see your big ass. Listen, there is thousands and thousands of you skipping class. It doesn't matter if they go to class. Moana is one of the best animated films of all time. What? Okay, can't, can't wait for the live action. Thank you, yes. But we, you're welcome. We talk about Moana. What can I say except you're welcome. And we talk about Mana. Honestly, listen, kid, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. Yeah. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was my way just messing around. I couldn't even let it buried its guts. Sprouted a tree, now you got coconuts. What's the lesson? What is the takeaway? Don't mess with my way when he's on a breakaway. Oh. And the temperature here on my skin oh. is a map of the victories I win. Look where I've been to make everything happen. Look at the me, 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 my way just ticket it tapping. That's it. Wow. <laughs> On the Samoan side, Polynesian side, we have a word called mana. Mana is spirit, mana is power, mana comes from in here. It's the thing that gives you goosebumps, it's that thing you feel, it's that thing when I walked out and we felt this thing, this yeah. is mana. Yeah. mana. This is mana. mana. It, it's very, very, very real and you could feel it. Mwah. Little things like I don't get driven anywhere, I don't want to get driven anywhere, I don't like chauffeurs. Keeps me in my way, just a little grounded, like yes. I could drive myself everywhere and not telling some guy, hey, take me here, take me there. That is something I'm going to start saying like, yeah, because when they open you your door, you feel so bad. I can open my own door, dude. They're trying to be courteous, it's their job. But also, the day I stop opening my own door is the day I become big old bitch. Here we go. That's a big cup. Oh. Oh. Here's the iconic sound, you guys know it. Oh. This special Terra Monitos goes out to Passion. Congratulations on your show. Very proud of you, very proud of all you boys. And to all of you. We love you guys, thank you for the support. Keep kicking ass. Cheers. In my world, when I sit down and we're talking about movies and all this other shit, it's never this. It's never this, this, back with the boys, and you. So, I appreciate it, and this one's to you. Thank this you, boys. you, pal. Cheers. You. Cheers. All right, we're going to take five-minute break here. Oh, hold on, one more. If you're some man! The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We walk out! We walk out! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this glorious Monday, March 4th, 2024, hour two of the program starts now! Sports! Are happening all around us, and we're lucky to be covering it. It's great to be back after a two-week vacation that I will say we were well-rested and very relaxed, mm -hmm. but missed the hell out of doing this every single day. Shout out to Sports Center, full in time. Yeah, yeah. Sports, Center. Sports, Center. You, Sports Center. Sports Center people love us, obviously. They got mm -hmm. an extra couple hours. Uh, excited to watch that as I was away. Very thankful for that, but it is m amazing to be back alongside the Toxic Table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt's sweet shirt today. Guys. Hey, I appreciate that. I had a few uh, new ones left over that, that I uh, decided, you know, I'll save these for when we get back, and this is just happened to be the first one. Purple, why not? Yeah, purple. Purple, why not? Nice. Purple's a great color. Love purple. Purple's Here's. a great color. We're all Mustangs here. One of Amen. the one half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs is a uh, Mustang. Tone, how you doing, bud? I, I am doing unbelievable. Like probably never better in my entire life. 
Wow. Okay. Oh. Tony. Up and up. I like that a lot. At Bubba Gumpino, the other half of the Hammer Down Cowboys. That's got to feel good to hear that out of the Hammer Down Boy. Oh, yeah. The boys are juiced to be back. We're ready for this. You know what? I like the Miami Dolphins. Top of the list, the NFL PA report card. That's right. That's our Super Bowl. Yeah. Joining us now, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen, a man who is a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup champion, now winner. Yep. Mm -hmm. COVID survivor, father of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who's, for the 14th straight year, went onto a boat. Yep. With a bunch of Ohio people. Mm-hmm. That's right. AJ Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. AJ, you're glowing. Wow. How are you doing, pal? Good yeah. to see you. Good to see you guys. No, uh, I don't have any new uh, nice tattoos on my underarm, but I tell you what, comment. I appreciate your passion for Bill Belichick. That's amazing. Yeah, what AJ wow. Hawk is referring to is what we learned to start the show is that during his vacation in Colorado, Boston Connor went to a white man with dreads named Justin, a tribe tattoo in Denver, and got, we're on to Cincinnati. Quoted by, obviously, William Stephen Belichick on his right bicep. Now, AJ, you noticed the same thing I did. What's that? I wasn't flexing, okay? (laughs) I could have been flexing to avoid this, but I said, you know what? I'm just going to let me be me. And here we are now. Hey, nice tricep, you fat prick. Okay? I understand what you guys are doing here. Tough angle. That's not, it's a straight on angle. That's the angle. That is the angle. That that particular part of the body is always going to get showcased in. Uh, so he said he has been gravity. last two days. He's gone after the arms a little bit. I knew I should. So it didn't just look like a saggy. <laughs> I knew I should have canvas. <laughs> I knew it. Is that thing getting stretched out already? I knew I should have flexed. That I, thing. That thing was. Some, <laughs> I'm gonna regret this for the rest of my life. <laughs> but that quote. That quote was uh, initially this big. Now, obviously, with the one week of stretch with the hang, <laughs> it's got a little bit larger. Uh, but we appreciate your your commitment, Bob. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Go Pats. AJ, I don't know if you know this. <laughs> the Pats fans hate the Dynasty documentary. They do not like it mm-hmm. at all. I guess everybody who hates the Patriots would love it. Mm-hmm. But uh, what Connor's saying is, what a bunch of crap. What an absolute oh. hack job. Yeah. They got everybody in that thing, too. Everybody's oh, yeah. in it. Everybody's in it. And everything that you're seeing is like, oh, man, I would like to see more of that. I'd like to hear more from that guy. I, I'd like to see what happened behind the scenes on that decision. But instead, because everyone knows the success, it's not about the success. It's about the stuff that is kind of riddled throughout the entire season. I mean, or dynasty, excuse me. I've only watched the first three episodes because after the third episode, I had such a bad taste in my mouth. I thought about not watching another episode. So now if you're not a Patriots fan, you hear that. Bingo. Maybe you want to go check it out. Yeah, you if should. You, yep. If you want to get a different look on the dynasty, which is what they might have been going for. Crafts in it, though. I think Bill's in it. Yeah, Kraft's in Adam's it. in it. Tom's in it's it. It's not a like lot. a hit piece, though. It's not some Patriots hit piece by any means. Well, you should watch it because uh, have you well, seen all of it? I haven't seen all of it. I understand that you guys are very upset that they didn't focus enough on the championships and everything you did, but that, like, same reason. People watch NASCAR to see the wrecks. Like, we want to see behind the scenes. We know how great they were. Agreed. Hey, listen, I, I, on NASCAR for sure, and that Pennzoil 400 out oh, in Vegas yesterday. Yeah. Those boys what were running. Race, what yeah. a race. Those boys what were running. What a yeah. race. Shout out to them. I actually turned that on for a little bit. Close close finish. Close oh, finish yeah. over there in the Pennzoil 400. Farnburger. AJ Cole, punter for the Las Vegas Raiders, did the uh, driver start your engine. Oh, wow. Sweet. So I love what that. What an honor. They got the brand out there. What an honor for him. But um, whenever it comes to like that type of stuff, I thought I was getting like a glimpse into the greatness. You know, that's what I thought I was going to get. Yeah. I haven't watched it yet, but with how pissed he is, I'm going to now. So I yeah, guess that's you good have news. To. What do other people think, though? Like, okay, they didn't make this for the Patriots fans. They made it for everybody. Like, do non-Patriots fans enjoy this? I don't know. We're going to find out. I guess I've we're going to find out. I watched the first three episodes, and I did fall asleep during the third one. But, like, the first <laughs> the first two it was episodes, late. It, it was late. late. It was late. Don't matter. It was late. Uh, He's half bottle whiskey deep. And right. Yeah. You know. um, but the first two episodes were, were sweet, I thought. Like, the, the especially the first First one where it is like right after Brady gets drafted and it shows him buying a condo from Ty Law and like who he was living with and just like how much different he is. like the they have like home video recordings of like the, like his roommate had a camera and recorded everything so like having all that stuff and being able to see it whereas you would you would never see that type of stuff like that was really cool to see but I have it I mean and again I'm not a Patriots fan so I wasn't nitpicking like oh I, I want to hear more I, I was kind of just like oh, whatever I'll just, whatever they want to show me I'm good with Bill Burr I believe was in that he was he'll yeah. be joining us tomorrow at 12 30. Nice. I'm excited to get his take on it you know because I can't wait if I would have known you know yeah oh yeah exactly you I think mean, that's how he's gonna be yes I do Ty mentioned he is the star of the show he he's the best one in in the 
interview process, at least throughout the first three episodes. He is hilarious. Yeah, but maybe they get to the whole greatness. Yeah. No, they don't. The next episode <laughs> is titled Spygate. Uh, then the one after well, that, that which, I, which again, I am interested in that. I, I do want to learn more about that. The one after Spygate, uh, the like thumbnail photo is Hernandez getting That's arrested. That's the whole episode. I want to learn oh. about that. Like Those are the things I want to learn about. I'm strictly upset that the first three episodes... Instead of going like Super Bowl to Super Bowl to Super Bowl, it is a lot of the history, which is great learning about Tom and how he started up, how Bob Kraft bought the team, how they brought in Bill Belichick, how the team was a big tuna before they brought in Belichick. Like all that stuff is great. But to span the dynasty, to the reason they're the dynasty, the three Super Bowls, to span that in five minutes is absurd. They oh. did gloss over it quite a bit. Just, they just did. boom, <laughs> snap of the fingers. Yep, that happened. All right, I can't wait to watch. Uh, we have some breaking news out of a press conference that. Maybe it hasn't even started yet. Okay, so Adam Schefter Not sure. at least got the script, I guess, from Jason Kelsey's press conference that was scheduled oh. to start eight minutes ago. Jason Kelsey is retiring from the NFL, and we'd like to say, hey, Jason, way to go, bub. Congrats, Congrats. Go, Jason. What a run. What an absolutely legendary career. A lot of people. Even centers and everybody has him down as the greatest center to ever play football. People would nitpick because the style in which he played, but nonetheless, he's on the Mount Rushmore of centers in everybody's conversation. And now everybody's getting to learn about him as a human, him as a family man, him as a dad, him as a husband. What? He's an Ohio guy who is one of the perfect representations of our sport to the world that is being welcomed into the NFL via the New Heights podcast and his brother's relationship with the biggest superstar on earth and Taylor swift we would all like to say from this particular program you done damn good jason mm -hmm. kelsey and we can't wait for the next chapter and what he does because the world is literally sitting at his fingertips whatever he wants to do is possible and i can't wait to watch aj hawk yeah selfishly i'm i, I was hoping he was gonna come back and play again i love watching the guy play he's, he's really obviously he can still do it at a very very high level but do you think he's going to use this presser as like an opportunity? Is he going to announce something, you think, or something that they might be doing with New Heights or where he's going? I don't know. We have it rolling right now. and He looks very emotional. He's, yeah. Yeah. How big his arms are. Yeah, he's jacked, dude. Jeez. It isn't even the collision I remember most, but the feeling before. Of what in the fuck is about All right. to happen? All right. <laughs> All right. We were live there. Jason. There we go. Perfect time. That's awesome. Whoops. That is awesome. <laughs> All time. Might as well just keep playing it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Dick Good. Welcome back. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, yeah. That, that's a five hole if I've ever seen one. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're not no the way. only ones. We're not the only ones. I bet NFL Network. Oh. Uh, Jason, we look, yeah, let's go back to it. Yeah. Hey, Richard Good and your team over there. I, I think Jason might let him play. He's earned it, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's allowed to do that. Oh, man. I am brought back to this day. I am brought back to this day. 12 years old. Roxborough Middle School, first day in pads. I've been asked many times, why did I choose football? What drew me to the game? And I never have an answer that gets it right. The best way I can explain it is what draws you to your favorite song, your favorite book. It's what it makes you feel. The seriousness of it, the intensity of it. Stepping on the field was the most alive and free I had ever felt. It was a visceral feeling with football unlike any other sport. The hairs would, on my arms would stand up. The hairs on my arms would stand up. I could hit somebody, run around like a crazed lunatic, and then get told, good job. I loved football, whether it was in my backyard with my brother, on the playground with my friends, or suiting up on Friday nights at Cleveland Heights High School. I, love every, I loved everything about it. Although I hadn't met him yet, Jeff Stoutland often shares a quote his father would tell him. More often than not, the easy way is the wrong way. Football was hard. 
much harder than any sport I had ever played, physically and mentally. In most other sports, I was bigger, faster, stronger than everyone what? else. On the football field, those traits were matched. On the lacrosse field, I felt like LeBron James. On the football field, I was Billy Hoyle. I loved the challenge that football was. The joy of winning, the agony of defeat, the anxiety of the unknown, and the camaraderie. of my teammates. I'd like to thank my high school football coaches, Mike Jones, Damian Creel, Kahari Hicks, and Gary Robolewski, I don't, I, Coach Robo, you know who you are. Uh, my <laughs> hockey coaches, Kirk Gunther, Steve Bogus, and Eddie Babcox, and my lacrosse coaches, Felipe Quintana and Ben Beckman. I'd also like to thank my band teacher, Brett Baker, all of you taught me, taught me countless lessons and put up with a very young, rambunctious kid that was full of immaturity, stupidity, and cockiness. I would without, would without question not be where I am today without your efforts with me and the countless other children you served in my brother and I's hometown, Cleveland Heights. From Cleveland Heights, I entered the University of Cincinnati as a walk-on. As a linebacker, I had no idea what to expect but scenes from Rudy would often race in my mind. It became apparent immediately that walk-ons would have to fight harder for their opportunities than the rest of the team. I had no stars, no investment from the team or the coaches. I'd have to earn everything, and that's good, because I had no clue what hard work was yet. Knowing that I had to earn my respect every day made me committed like never before. In my first college weightlifting session, graduate assistant Jordan Roth put me through the hardest weightlifting session I had ever been through. At the end of it, he said, if I could walk around the perimeter of the weight room holding my hands above my head, I could leave. Um, and if I couldn't hold my hands above my head, I'd have to stay and clean the whole weight room. That entire year, I found out later that uh, cleaning the weight room was something I would get used to. That entire year I consider a blessing. D'Antonio ran a tough program, the weight room was even tougher, and I redefined in my mind what working hard actually was. They pushed me into areas of fatigue I didn't know I had, and for that experience, I am forever grateful to all of them. After redshirting my first year, Mark D'Antonio left Cincinnati for Michigan State, and we hired up and coming head coach from Central Michigan, Brian Kelly. This turned out to be the biggest turning point in my career. Not because of Brian, he was great and we enjoyed tremendous success together, but because he brought with him strength coach Paul Longo. Two weeks into winter workouts, Paul whispered to me in the middle of warmups, you'd make a great center. I shrugged it off, offensive line. Never in a million years did I think I'd play that position. Paul was different. As opposed to working guys into the ground, his motto was work smarter, not harder. His main goal was to improve us as athletes and make us stronger, faster, more explosive. He didn't care about anything else. Once during a conditioning drill, I saw a teammate struggling to keep up during a run, so I slowed down to encourage him, and he yelled at me. He said, you run this exercise the best you can. Lead from the front. It's my job to take care of the back. Paul moved me to offensive line that spring. And it ended up being the single greatest move that ever happened to me as a football player. There are too many people to thank for my times at Cincinnati, so I'd like to limit it to coaches Paul Longo, Jeff Quinn, Brian Kelly, Mark D'Antonio, strength coaches Tim Swanger, Dave Andrews, Coach Kerry Combs, Coach Butch Jones, as well as athletic trainer Bob Mangine and orthopedic doctor Angelo Colosimo. Of course, all of my teammates and friends, university support staff, all of you made my time there something I wouldn't trade for the world. Some of the most enjoyable years of my life. 
After my senior year ended, it became apparent the NFL would be an opportunity. Although few teams had interest in a lineman that weighed 280 pounds. Lucky for me, the Eagles had just hired Howard Mudd, a legendary coach who valued offensive linemen for their athleticism more than their size. Having watched and emulated Jeff Saturday in my own game, it all felt too perfect when the Eagles selected me in the sixth round. Immediately after being drafted, my agent, Jason Bernstein, said, you have no idea how perfect this is. You are going to fit in great. You're going to fit in great in Philadelphia. This is your kind of town. Thirteen seasons in Philadelphia. And I look back on a career filled with ups and downs. I'd like to thank the four head coaches I played for, Andy Reid, Chip Kelly, Doug Peterson, and Nick Sirianni. Consider myself lucky to have played for each of you. I'd like to thank Jeffrey Lurie for his dedication to building an organization that values its employees as people and gives them the resources necessary to thrive. I've only had one boss, so I don't know much to compare to. <laughs> but Jeffrey always made it a point to show his appreciation and love for his players on, and more importantly, off the field. I'd like to thank Howie Roseman for drafting me and for always working hard to improve our team, even from the other side of the building that one year. Whether it be coaches, players, salary cap, or the numerous other things you control, you work tirelessly and calculatedly to improve this organization. I'd like to thank Big Dom DeSandro, truly the life force of this organization. Hell yeah. yeah. No one gives more time and energy to this team. At the drop of a hat, Dom is by your side. My family and I give our sincerest thank yous for always treating us with dignity and assistance. There are so many teammates, coaches, support staff, trainers, equipment, cafeteria workers. You guys have no idea the amount of people in this building it takes to assist our players and me. I'd like to thank you all by name, but we'd be here far too long for anyone to continue listening. So instead, I will share memories, if that's all right with you all. It is. When I look back down the road, I'm sure there are things I will forget, but these are some of the things I'm sure I won't. I won't forget the call I got from Andy Reid on draft day and my father rushing into the room with tears streaming down his face as his son's dreams had just been realized. It had just been announced on TV I had been drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. And I won't forget two years later that same man and my brother receiving a call and him being drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. This time, the tears streaming down both my father and I's face as my brother had just realized his own. I won't forget the first time I saw Jason Peters do a one-on-one -on -one pass set with Trent Cole and being amazed at the speed, balance, and power I had just witnessed. It reminded me or looked like a grizzly bear wrestling a panther. It was so impressive it made me question if I was good enough to play it in this league. I watched the next couple guys go and thought, okay, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I won't forget Thirsty Thursdays at 879, a bar owned by Brent Selleck and Todd Harriman's that stayed open a whole six months because nobody paid for a drink. <laughs> Poor business practices indeed. That bar may have closed quickly, but the friendships at Forge remain open to this day. I won't forget my second training camp 
walking downstairs in my Lehigh dorm to paramedics rushing in and Coach Dave Culley's look on his face. It made the expression like he had seen a ghost a whole lot clearer. I asked if I could help. And he said, no, just go to practice. Ah, come on. We would find out later at practice that Garrett Reed had passed away. Only a few hours after that, Andy addressed the team. It's the most intense moment I've ever shared with a group of men and the outpouring of support and love for my friend. And the Reed family at the funeral soon after was truly remarkable. I won't forget Chip Kelly's first game as Eagles head coach against the Washington Redskins. We ran close to 50 plays in the first half. <laughs> we were so tired, but it didn't matter because they couldn't stop us. The NFL had never seen something like this before. I remember all of us thinking after that game, this is going to change the NFL. I won't forget walking out onto a snowless field before warm-ups against the Detroit Lions, and then walking out of the tunnel to a blizzard. The Lions in white jerseys blended into the snow so well I could not see the second area of the defense. And the second half was all the Sean McCoy. He somehow figured out a way to cut on a dime that day, and man, it was incredible to watch. It was probably the most fun game of football I've ever been in. It felt like we were all kids again that day, just playing in the backyard. I won't forget finding out in the 2017 Rams game that Carson Wentz had tore his ACL. The whole team had an uneasy feeling in the locker room, all of us questioning what this would mean until Malcolm Jenkins addressed the team. He gave a very typical Malcolm speech, invoking confidence in who we were and breaking it down with his patented, we all we got, we all we need. I won't forget Nick Foles having the game of his life on the biggest stage possible. And the biggest dick on the team going up to Doug Peterson and asking for the Philly special. <laughs> and Doug Peterson having the biggest balls in the stadium. <laughs> to say, yeah, let's do it. And Brandon Graham finding a way to stop Tom Brady once, literally once. And the way the ball hung in the air on that last Hail Mary and how it felt like an eternity. Just looking, no sound registering, completely engulfed in the moment. When it finally landed, running onto the field, looking for a flag, anything that would mean it was over. We had done it. I won't forget the parade and what it meant to the city of Philadelphia the joy it brought our community, and the closure it gave to so many. The stories from fans that had been waiting generations for that moment fulfilled that triumph to another level. On the route, I remember meeting a woman with ashes of a dead relative whom she had promised wouldn't miss the parade if the Eagles had ever won it. A speech that had written itself and one that had symbolized what we had all lived as players, as a team, and as a city. That wasn't my speech, it was Philadelphia's. I won't forget my mother becoming mom of the NFL, a representative for all moms out there who have sacrificed so much for their children. 
I won't forget Nick Sirianni sending me kegs of beer to convince me to keep playing these last few years. He knows the key to my heart. <laughs> I won't forget making the playoffs in his first season, the Super Bowl in his next, and the immense heartbreak at the collapse of this last season. And although last season truly sucked, I wouldn't trade any of my time with you or those teams for the world. Everything happens for a reason. And I have truly enjoyed my time with you, coach. Sometimes the flowers get knocked back a bit. But the roots remain. And I can't wait to watch what re-blossoms this next season. I won't forget falling short to the Chiefs. This is where it's going to go off the rails. Nice, Brett. I won't forget falling short to the Chiefs and the conflicted feeling of immense heartbreak I had selfishly. for myself and for my teammates. And at the same time, the amount of pride I had that my brother had climbed the mountaintop once again. We have a small family. We have a small family, one, we have a small family, no cousins, one aunt, one uncle. It was really my brother and I our whole lives. We did almost everything together. Competed, fought, laughed, cried, and learned from each other. We invented games, imagined ourselves as star players of that time. We'd envision making the winning plays day after day on Kohler Ridge Road. We won countless Super Bowls in our minds before ever leaving the house. And when we weren't playing, we were at the other one's games, but seated in a lawn chair or a bench, a Capri Sun in our hand that mom had packed, cheering during the game and waiting outside afterward to celebrate a victory together or offer encouragement after a defeat. There is no chance I'd be here without the bond Travis and I share it made me stronger, tougher, smarter, and taught me the values of cooperation, loyalty, patience, and understanding. It's only too poetic I found my career being fulfilled in the city of brotherly love. I knew that relationship all too well. Some people struggle to play in this city. They can't handle the booze, the media, or our fans. Consider it a great blessing to play in the most passionate sports town in America. The sense of urgency in this city to win has pushed our organization, has fueled it to take chances, fix problems, and work tirelessly in an effort to win. At times, you hate it as an athlete especially those new to our city. But when you've been through it enough, you learn to appreciate it. No one celebrates their own like the city of Philadelphia. 
Athletes become demigods in the city, even ones whose deeds span decades before. The Eagles are the number one ticket in town, the most talked about thing at nearly every moment. With that amount of attention, you better be ready to overcome the lows that will happen and be ready to persevere in the face of the criticism. Yes, they will let you know when you are not performing well, every time. But they will also love you if you show effort, aggression, desire, the will to fight. They will love you in this city if you love it, the way you love your brother. You will be loved by going above and beyond to show that you care because they care. They've been caring for generations in this town about this team and they aren't about to accept a bunch of excuses and soft ass nonsense representing the name on the front of the jersey, <laughs> something they've invested their entire lives in. If you don't like what the fans and media are saying as a player, it's very easy. Love them, treat them like your brothers, and go out and play your balls off. Wear your heart on your sleeve, and I guarantee you change those narratives. I remember seeing Zach Ertz shy away from a block one day, one game against Vontez Berflicht in the Cincinnati Bengals. Rightfully so, the fans ripped him apart, crushing him for doing it. The next week, the first catch I saw Zach Ertz snag, he ran after the catch like I had never seen. It took three guys to bring him down, and I heard the link erupt with cheers for his effort. Today, you won't find a single Philadelphian with a bad word to say about Zach Ertz and the legacy he left behind. As players, you write the narratives. The fans and media, for the most part, it's occasionally different, <laughs> only write what you give them. If you go above and beyond in this city, you will be rewarded beyond your wildest dreams. I saw firsthand the wrath of the Eagles fans in the 2016 Eagles season. And rightfully so, I had an awful start to that season where I was often overpowered, had many holding penalties that cost our team, and looked like one of the worst centers in the league. I was wanted out of town by nearly everyone. And it wasn't just the fans that wanted me to go on. It was nearly everyone in this organization. That offseason, I heard trade rumors galore and speculation I'd be cut. I imagine if the Eagles had received a trade offer for a brand new set of washing machines, they may have pulled the trigger. <laughs> Hell, Jackie if I was in charge, I would have pulled the trigger. There's only one person in this building who still wanted me, and it's he who I have to thank most for the career I've had. That's Jeff Stoutland. No one has been most influential, no one has been more influential or meaningful to my success on the field in my career than Stout. I think one of the greatest things a human being can give another is belief. This world, life, it can be hard. It can challenge yourself to points of self-doubt and that is a dangerous place to be. Well, I am lucky. My whole life, I have been surrounded by people that have believed in me. My father, my mother, my brother, Paul Longo, Howard Mudd, and in my darkest hour as a Philadelphian, Stout was the one who believed in me. He was adamant my problems could be fixed with proper technique, fundamentals, and work. And work we did. That off-season in training camp, I focused on using my hands better, playing with leverage, proper footwork, and prepared with an edge to prove to myself that I was good enough. The following season in 2017, I enjoyed the finest season of my 13-year career, not only as a player, but as a team. And it meant more because of the struggles 
and work we had been through. Without him, I doubt any of this would have been possible or that I'd still be here. Since that offseason, I have amassed six All-Pros, five Pro Bowls, and am recognized by some as one of the best centers to ever play the game. I am very proud knowing where I once was and the legacy I have left behind. And the man we can all thank is Jeff Stoutland. Second stout quote of the evening, no man is an island. We must draw our strengths from others. I'd like to thank my teammates, my other brothers. Oh, how I've drawn my strengths from you all. I was fortunate to play with great players. Some of the best this league has to offer. But it was really off the field, just sitting in the cafeteria with my teammates, breaking bread and talking about life that were some of the most meaningful times I spent in my career. The NFL is truly like no other place and at the same time represents America as a whole like no other. Fat offensive linemen from Cleveland play on the same field as skinny wide receivers from Louisiana and kickers from Chicago. Whew. Tight ends from Stanford play next to tackles from Kilgore Community College. Defensive ends from inner city Detroit play next to defensive tackles from Yazoo City, Mississippi. Six foot nine, Jordan Malata plays the same sport as four foot eight Darren Sproles. <laughs> <laughs> the melting pot of geographic location, economic background, race, body type, personality, and athletic traits of an NFL locker room is truly remarkable. And we all rely on each other and respect one another and each of our differences because we know we're stronger together. I will always cherish this brotherhood, the relationships it fostered, and how unique an experience it has been to enjoy the field with you all. Coming to work every day with a group of men who were driven to be the best in the world at what they do is an environment that will surely be hard to replicate. I won't forget the Eagles Christmas party in 2014 and heading out afterwards with a, brunt, a bunch of All right, teammates. there you have it. Jason Kelsey makes it official. He has retired, and he has thanked everybody that has helped him get to this point. Mm -hmm. Coach Stout, obviously offensive line coach, run game coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles, was a man, a uh, strength coach from college, mm -hmm. turned yep. him into mm -hmm. an offensive lineman body type-wise. Chip Kelly, revolutionizing football, you heard him say. Sirianni, you know, getting a chance to experience how he coaches. Andy Reid, obviously a massive piece of it. Jason Kelsey, thank you for allowing us to witness you play football, pal. Yeah. How about his love for his brother, too, man? Obviously, uh, he had a lot to say, as he should, 13 years in the making, let alone a lifeline. And he said, you know, some people say best. Yeah, everybody says he's one of the greatest centers to ever exist. Uh, love what he's about. Love what he's standing for. Love the messaging there at the end that we heard. And very grateful for old Jason Kelsey, A.J. Hawk. Yeah, I mean, it, he, he wrote that. I wonder how long it took him to write it because he's, like, he's covering everything. And I think he's doing it in a great way where he's injecting humor throughout. You can see, like... The whole Nick Foles situation that was awesome. That'll go. Hopefully, that doesn't go overlooked when he how he how he threw that one in there. But yeah, I mean, it was just so awesome. The dude has so much respect from other players and coaches and everything. And not only, I mean, because he's an awesome dude and he's so fun when you see him out doing all this stuff and everything he does. But when you watch him play, like the dude is an absolute machine. Like mm -hmm. he is so so good. His resume is legit. You know that's why anything he does in the football world. Not only because he's popular, people know him now. Not that they didn't before, but he's the most famous offensive lineman ever, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. ever in the history of yeah. offensive. Line. He's the right one, though, too. Mm -hmm. You know, he For has sure. the respect yeah. of his teammates. I think he has enough of a story where literally anybody can gravitate towards it, and his perspective is going to be one that's vastly different than anybody else. So anything he does go 
going forward, at least in a football world, is going to be a smashing success. Yeah. Sure. And I can't wait for it. I honestly can't. Where's Horro on his sleeve? He oh, said that was a part of the entire thing. That's As we right. pivot away from one of the NFL's greats, let's go to one of the NHL's greats. You know, because hockey is awesome. Oh, yeah. And during our two-week break, there has been a lot of things that have been happening in the hockey world mm-hmm. that have been fantastic. I have a new favorite player. Yep. Wow. Now, Sidney Crosby is obviously always going to be the guy yep. in – I don't like what's happening with the Pittsburgh Penguins. What's happening? What do you mean? Well, they stink. Do they? Oh, yeah. No. no. Is that right? Pittsburgh Penguins stink. Sidney Crosby's having one of his best seasons he's ever had. Guy's been playing for 20 years. Yeah. He's playing his best season, and the rest of the Penguins absolutely stink. So, oh. Sidney Crosby's not in this conversation. Okay? He's okay. not in this conversation. I have a new favorite player. His name is Matt Rempe. Ooh. I don't know if you guys know who this is. New York Rangers literally just came into the league. Six-round pick, I do believe, out of Calgary. Comes into his NHL career, and he goes, all right, well, I'm going to fight people. So mm-hmm. three out of the first four games got into a fight. Four fights in his first seven games as a professional Ooh. hockey player. Stands at a staggering six-foot Seven, and we're not talking about wow. we're not talking about little tiny fights either. No. We're talking mm. about standing in there and throwing haymakers with the other team's haymaker thrower. He's now getting called out by all the OGs that are basically fighters from back in the day. It has become a scene. Normally in center ice, everybody goes to their feet. A six foot seven young guy who's trying to make a name for himself is throwing bombs with the other team in a stadium. Here, as you watch, this is you can guarantee. Almost. You watch a Rangers game. Somebody's going to be trying to start shit with this guy. Now, there are some people saying that his career is going to not be long. And before his last fight with uh, Reeves, he actually had to look at the bench and say, am I allowed to do this? Because there's a penalty coming immediately afterwards. Joining us now to maybe break this all down and let us know what else we have missed, aside from the Rempe show, which is a bomb show that he throws every single time he seemingly puts skates on his feet. Ladies and gentlemen, P.K. Subban. Yeah, Yeah. Hey, Jets. PK, Gentlemen. thank you for joining us. You look so cool. We, you, you look so cool. I know you're on vacation want, right now, so I appreciate it. I put the shades back on for you. I know you like those Henry Vibscobs, so I made sure I threw those on for you. Oh, the Vibscobs. I mean, they are <laughs> absolutely my favorite thing of all time. Tell me about this Rempy guy, PK. Four fights, first seven games. Seems like he's a marked man now. Is he going to be around forever, or are we in the Rempy era right now, PK? Listen, listen to me. Actually, you know what? Let me take these sunglasses. Oh, the Vince Cox, come oh, on. No. Listen to me. This kid, uh, I got so much respect for him, and everybody should in the National Hockey League. And I got to give credit to a lot of the OGs, as you said, that gave this kid a fight when he came into the league. He came in hungry. They gave him the opportunity to fight, and he's taking it and run with it. And this guy can play, too. All of this stuff about people saying, oh, he's going to have a short career. The kid doesn't have to fight right now. If he runs around and hits the way that he's been hitting and getting in kitchens and bringing the energy to that third and fourth line that he's been bringing for the New York Rangers, we're going to see it against Florida. That's going to be a hell of a fight. This guy can play as well, but he's tough as nails. And Ryan Reeves, that is like, this is, that's a, that's a heavyweight bout. Like that's as, that's as tough as it's probably going to get for the kid right now. And he's only 21 guys. Guys, he hasn't even filled out yet. Wait till he puts on 20, 30 pounds this summer. He's going to be an absolute killer in the league. Yeah, he's killer. Six, six foot seven, and this Reeves fight was a good one. I, I mean, yeah. they were exchanging blows. Reeves mm-hmm. sat on it and waited till the end. Mm-hmm. He was like, well, kid's going to get tired too here. You know, a little bit of veteran, a little gamesmanship in the whole thing. But it's become must watch, literally. And he is. Oh, no. He's gotten hit a couple times. You know, with the way he stands. That left eye is just sitting there waiting to get targeted. Some of these pictures that have come out afterwards of his black eyes and, and shine. I mean, this Ooh, kid's got shiners. Oh, yeah. This kid's got That's shiners big, out there. Make no doubt about it. You can't be a fraud to play hockey because someone's going to call you out. You're going to have to answer the bell at some point in time. And this kid has answered the bell every single time. Look at him. Look, and he's still a good-looking guy. And I don't heal up. He'll be just fine. He'll be just fine. But I love the fact that he went over to the bench, made sure with his coach everything was good. And listen, that Rangers team has gotten a lot better since he's been there. Those guys are playing loose. There's a lot more time and space. But I would not want to see that third line with Rempe on it, with uh, Goudreau on it, and uh, I think it's Edstrom on it. I mean, Edstrom's like 6'6". Six, six. It's a lot of size, heavy guys. So they're going to be tough. They're going to be a tough out in the playoffs. 
It should be a hell of a game, though. Florida and the Rangers, it's going to be a hell of a fight. All right. Well, I can't wait to watch that. And uh, shout out to the boys on the Ranger being like, we got a 6 yeah, yeah. yeah, We can do whatever He's the hell the we want out here. Congrats, Bruce. Way to go, way to go yeah, Bruce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Way to go, Paul. So Rangers fans are upset, right? Hell yeah. Well, yeah, they got their khakis getting ruined from all the splooging all the time whenever they see Rempy go ahead and be a tough guy. Is it splooging? Because I, I I thought Bruce was kind of saying earlier some of the Rangers fans were like, please stop fighting. We don't want you to get hurt anymore. Oh, is that really? Really what what the no, of course, no, that's no. what Rangers no, no. are. Can't have all it. of those, I'm so sick of it. And that's why, <laughs> Thanks, even Bruce. when I post, I love to tee it up because all these fans, all these people that have never laced up a pair of skates, oh. have never put the huh. pads on, yep. have never been in a game before, think that their opinion matters. It doesn't. This is great for the game. All these <laughs> guys matters. can play. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. And I'm doing it on ABC and ESPN. And I'm promoting this thing because it is great for the game. Listen, it's fun. Nobody's getting hurt. That's part of the game. This is a part of hockey culture. It's been that way for a long time. We don't want to see too much of the stage fighting. That's my only thing. I think it's got to be a part of the game. But both of these guys can play. So I got no issue with it. Zero issue. Me neither, by the way. Go ahead, AJ. PK, what would what's your strategy if you're fighting a guy that's six foot seven throwing bombs like this? And, and second part of that. What do you th- what's the NHL's reaction? I would hope that they are absolutely pumped for this guy. Do they just not want it to get out of control? What, like It's bringing a lot of great pub, I feel like, to the NHL and the Rangers. And it's not what hockey is only. Like We no, understand no, that. No. We understand that. But it's a nice little ad. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a nice little ad and sprinkle in there. You know, it, it is a great sprinkle. And by the way, that's a part of the game that's been missing, in my opinion, for the last little while. When I came into the league 14, 15 years ago, listen – you had all the heavies in the league. Uh, other than Probert and Domi, everybody else was there. I've seen Bugard. I've seen all of these guys, Camp Jets. I've seen all these tough guys come through the league, and it's just a dying art. So to see this come back into the game, it's still a part of the game that we want to protect as players. We want to see it. You ask any player in the league, I, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find any player that doesn't want to see this type of fighting going on in the game. And that's what it matters. The players got to go out and do it at the end of the day. If that's the way they want to police the game, let it happen. I, I just think the players got to play. And good on Matt Rempe. He's a young kid. He's got a lot of hockey left to play. He's just got to continue to play hockey the way that he's been playing, and he'll be fine. But listen, to say that people don't enjoy it, they do. I fought one guy in my career who was six seven. He still plays in the league, Kraus, and he had hit Victor Arvidsson. Victor Arvidsson might have been maybe five six. If Arby's listening, he's probably like, I'm 5'8". He's probably pissed I'm knocking a couple inches off of him. But I think he's like 5'6". He's not that We got a couple friends like that, too. Yeah, we (laughs) know what you're saying. Yeah. We know the the height. Yeah, we know the... Yeah, exactly. And Kraus buried him. And it was like my first couple of months on the team. And I looked at him and I said, you know what? If this is a way to get yourself involved in a team, show that you're willing to stand for your teammates. And I go over to him and literally it was like, bam, bam from Flintstones. He was just falling like this on the top of my head. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. When you fight guys that are six, seven, when you fight guys that are that big, you got to try, they got the reach. You got to try to get inside. I didn't get inside, but as you can see, my face is still is still in proportion. It still looks good. So oh. I would say that that fight ended in a draw. Well, six out of seven days a week, we got a massage, probably a little facial yeah, operation yeah. going well, on. I mean, you look good. You look <laughs> young. You do look young as a guy that's gotten into a couple of scraps. But, I mean, hockey fighting, your reach is everything. Your reach is literally yeah. all you have. Be- hey, here's Oh, geez. This is cross. Hey, hold on, Pat. I heard you on a podcast, and... I'm going to say probably what you wanted to say, and that that's black doesn't crack. I mean, you know, we got the genetics. <laughs> it doesn't crack. Let's be honest. And when you're mixing in the massage and all that good stuff, you know, listen, it's all premeditated. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Hey, good for, hey, good for you guys. Yeah, yeah, incredible. They said, hey, they on here now, I seen them. I got into a, a certain uh, Twitter. And I'm not going to say that either, but they, they said I'm aging like a banana. Like, like, <laughs> they, I'm aging like milk. They said it's not, not worse than milk. They, they said like uh, almond milk that ain't even coming from a titty. I think, oh, geez. Yeah, people are saying about how I'm aging. You know what I mean? I, I saw a lot of people saying like, like, man, Pat's, <laughs> Pat's six years older than me. I would, I thought this, I thought this dude was fifty. Come on. <laughs> a lot of people saying that, you know, and uh, I do appreciate that. And I'm going to pick up some things to my routine as well. Sure, sure. You know mm-hmm. because. 
a lot of my friends who happen to have the same type of uh, future face as you reach out to me and said, we got to get you some lotions. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was nice. That was very kind. Of Pat, keep it simple, dude. Berries and juices. Just berries and juices. Keep it simple. I'm dumping that on my face? Yeah, 100%. You've seen coming to America. Remember, he said berries and juices. You put it in the hair, on the face, on the beard, it works. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. There you go. There you go. Hey, it feels like, boys, you all look very young. I want to let you know. Sure. From what I've learned and gathered, I think we all understand. We got to maybe start berries and yeah, juices. Cold berries it. and juices. Berries, berries and juices, this entire thing. As we wrap up, as PK is going into a section that is low in service, he's driving, joining us from his vacation. We appreciate him. Conversation will continue with him as we flow into ESPN Plus and YouTube. Obviously, the second hour, most of it was filled by Jason Kelsey's retirement speech. It ended with him thanking his brother, hugging him, and it's saying, That's all I got. And then walking off. We appreciate you, Jason. Yeah. We appreciate Jason Kelsey. The game's going to miss him, but the world is excited to see what he does next, AJ. He's going to be awesome. I mean, what will he do next? Just continue the new heights, or is he going to do try something else maybe as well? I mean, everything. He can literally do whatever he wants. Yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah And we saw his ass intoxicated, we assume. Right, yeah. Levitate back up into that yeah. suite. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You remember that? In boots. Yep. Tim's. He had Tim's on, and, le and then he jumps out of it and lands on ice. Mm-hmm. And slides and balances himself. I mean, it. See you tomorrow. Came from the weight room. See you tomorrow. That's a great way to come back. Just missed it. <laughs> yeah, right. You hit one. We had it too. It came music. out of nowhere. We had the music too. Nick, you tried your yeah. best. We missed it, AJ. Mm, my bad. I didn't how, about, how about Jason Kelsey having a fuck in his press conference? I that like that. Awesome. That was so early. Awesome. Right away. Yeah. As soon as we go over there. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go ahead and see what Jason Kelsey's up to. <laughs> was he talking about Nick? Oh, never fucking. <laughs> All right. I love this. Was this he, is why this is good representation. Is he talking about Nick Foles' penis? Is that what he said? Well, I think he was talking about just being like the bravado. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, oh, because I thought they called him Big Paul's Foles. Figuratively or. Well, sorry, no. what was that, AJ? It wasn't Big Paul no, it was Falls. Big. Was, it, was it being literal or was oh, it, it was Big, big Richard? Yeah, yeah, Big, big Richard. Big, big Richard. Big Dick Nick. Oh, yeah, that's what they called him. Yeah. So it's true. Jason confirmed it. Yeah, he said biggest hog on the team. Yeah. No, that's not what he said. <laughs> that is, that's, well, that's what he that's said. Exactly. Well, he said. Kind of. yeah, I, you could I mean, infer that. Yeah. I mean, there's a chance that that is what he said. He would know. And then he said I Peterson's walking But around. mostly I think he said just like... You know, the gusto. Yeah, sure. Oh. Like that type of bravado. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, the, yeah, yeah. that's what I think. Pizzazz. You know? Yeah, boom. Yeah. The pizzazz. Boom. So it's more like this guy. Yeah. Big as, look at his dick. This yeah, guy yeah. calls exactly. his own. <laughs> You know, balls like, on number. He's that, big dick. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, wouldn't you say big balls? I know mean, he said balls for Doug for Peterson. Peter, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Coconuts. Yeah. If I had a chance to uh, potentially see Doug Peterson's combine this weekend, he's oh. handsome. It's cool. Yeah, he, he, is he a big son of a bitch? Ah, oh, he's sitting. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's pretty I think he's like six. He's pretty he's big. Six four, man. Former quarterback. Big right? head. Yeah, yeah. Oh, big yeah. powerful head. Yeah, he's a big. Dude. Yeah, he's got and his it is the flow. Like his aura is so cool. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. walking towards him because I wanted to go thank him for joining the program. Mm -hmm. You know, I did a lot of hey, thanks for joining us on the show because I don't get to see a lot of these people. The only way I know him is literally on the show. Do I talk to him beforehand? Not, not really, unless it's like, yeah. hey, we're like, there's not real. So every conversation is. Pretty much, pretty public. Yeah, live action. So I just, I had the opportunity to just give like a thanks to a bunch of people, you know, and that was a cool thing. You get close to Doug Peterson, you're like, mm, this is a cool motherfucker, right? Yeah. Now. This is a cool, you know, like just the whole vibe yeah. of him. What success story? And I heard it there in the Jason Kelsey speech, like they won a Super Bowl there, Doug Peterson. Yeah. Statue. Crazy how fast that changed, Statue. right? Crazy how fast they almost not forget about it, but just move on and kick him to the curb. Whoa. I mean, I'm not saying. Uh, yeah, you know, well, well, nah, we don't know what it was. Go ahead, AJ. I don't know what happened. I don't remember exactly how it ended with me it. neither. I, did we ever learn? Because it was just like, yeah, it happened. Mutually agreed. Yeah, right? but, it, yeah, but it was after. It, it was mutually agreed after announcing that he was coming back. Remember, there was like, hey, Doug will. That was still a weird coach. scene. Yeah, and then I, there was some conversation, and then it was like, all right, never mind, he's gone. Yeah, so like, I don't know. I, I didn't know Doug Peterson then. And we don't know exactly how that whole thing ended, but we do know he took one year off, did like, uh, he went to, we saw him at a couple practices yep. and training camps and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then he goes down to Jacksonville and it's like, all right, here we go. He's got an opportunity down there with, I think, the way, especially with what it sounded like the Khan family wanted to do with Urban Meyer. Yeah. Yes. And then that just felt like Urban Meyer was like, I want this building, I want this building. And they're like, all right, hey, like, kind of, we need you to build this thing up. It goes how it went. Bad. Right. Yeah. Great college coach. Obviously. Yeah. Urban Meyer is a great college coach. Yeah, won a lot of games. Yes. Not even – there's not – you can't 
dispute that ever in conversation. Nope. But in the NFL, at Jacksonville Jaguars, more specifically, it didn't work out. But that was supposed to be a big-time investment. You remember that, AJ? That was like, hey, this is your team almost, kind of. Didn't they announce, like, some giant performance center they were building that was hundreds of millions yep. of dollars, like, before, like, as he took the gig, I feel like. And he was walk. remember, he was, like, site. Yeah, team. Yes. He was a part of like the consulting crew for the Khan family Ooh. beforehand. So it was like uh wow. it was supposed to be like a seemingly like a 30 year invest like right. a 20 yeah. year Urbanville. Here we go. This is kind of your team. You're, you you make decisions who's coming, how they're coming. Obviously got to work alongside Balky here mm-hmm. and then we'll keep going forward, but it's like I think kind of similar with Doug Peterson. Like hey, this is your team. Let's go ahead and figure this whole thing out and you know, you got Trevor Lawrence. It ended, you know, not how anybody yeah, not good. would have thought. Not good at all. And then they're going to lose Calvin Ridley, seems mm-hmm. like. Yep. Yeah. Unless they want to pay. Hopefully. They reset the market the first time at, I think they, at yep. the wide receiver position if they, if with they, a Christian Kirk or mm-hmm. whatever. So who knows what they're going to do there. But, like, you meet Doug Peterson, it's like, this, this is a cool motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. I like. I was like, you're an incredibly cool dude. And he was very kind, very nice to us. He knew who Ty was like that it was a pretty cool situation (laughs) Uh, they were very similar to the Eagles this year where they kind of just they were they were in first in the AFC Mm -hmm. and then they just fell apart over the last part very similar to the Eagles um but yeah, Trevor got hurt, right? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he like, got hurt. Two different, times, played, two different was, injuries. Yeah. But with Ridley, I think I think if they re-sign him, they have to give the Falcons a second-round pick as well, or something like that. That's part of the situation. So uh, I think a lot of people think he's he's gone. A lot of people think that. <laughs> yes. uh, but hey. not everybody's going to New England. Yeah, well, not everybody has a hundred million dollars in cash. Yeah, but Indianapolis Colts are going to be snooping around in every single market. Well, the AFC South's not a joke Colts. anymore either. What's that? AFC South's not a joke anymore. No, this is the show. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know about that, but it's, it's not. The a, show. It's not uh, the laughing stuff. Much improved. Yeah, it's much improved. Yeah, most improved division by far. Hang there the banner. There we go. Did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> Hang it. We don't have enough room. We got too many banners. Yeah, too many right. AFC mm-hmm. finals ones. That's one. Yeah, we had, saw that Har- Harbaugh Ring of Honor. He was sitting right underneath it. Dude, him yeah. and his kid. That was cool. Harbaugh yeah. used it as like a spectator event. I was gonna say he did not yeah. move all week. He, he, he had, was in that <laughs> spot. Did you see him? Did you guys get to see him or no? No. no. No, we went, too went into the suite. He was down there with his son. <laughs> Literally, yeah. look, folks headed in Charger suite and was like, do I know anybody in here? Is Coach, coach here? here? Hey, no, 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 he's, he's down, down there. Kid. Son. All right, well, good luck this season. Yeah. Hey, happy for you guys. <laughs> yeah. And then just kind of <laughs> kept it moving. But that was the combine in a nutshell there. Yeah. Just like poke your head in the suite. Who, who is this? Because not everybody had the suite. Like some people taped like their the logo mm-hmm. yeah. on a thing. So that was easy. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah. that's this team. So mm-hmm. we, some people did not do that. Dude. No. And a lot of people were, like, standing sideways. So you'd have to guess from the color on their sleeve what team <laughs> it potentially was. So oh, that was no. the whole seat. Yeah. Dude. I would love to watch you sort that out. Yeah. That'd be uh, awesome. we, we did a couple of, like, I don't know who. Yeah, I think it was you. You <laughs> thought it was the Texans, and it was, like, the Bucks or something. Like, hey, is this the Texans? Like, no, the Bucks. Like, yeah, fuck those guys. <laughs> 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 It was a wild scene, dude. It was it was nice to meet a lot of people, though. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get in the Pats one? Uh, so I did see a couple Pats people. I don't know. I don't know anybody I mean, over there. Yeah. It's I had some. I had people from different teams text me asking if I was there with you, and I said no. But, uh, you know, I should stop by. So after they showed us on the thingy, bunch of text messages to come stop mm-hmm. by. But some coaches weren't there because they were doing interviews too, mm-hmm. meetings. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Hey, are you going to be there at like five o'clock or whatever?" And I'm like. I don't think so. Nope. We did stay longer though. Yeah. It was uh we were there for a while. Was Artie in the suite or was he uh he was out? You know, Artie was in the suite. Artie was in the suite. It was great seeing Artie. Met Dan Rooney. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh, nice. That's sweet. Met Dan Rooney. Yeah. Steelers hoodie on. He knows the program. Mm-hmm. Says he watches every day. Yeah, which might have been a sell. Could I don't know, just to me, yeah. but it was good hands. Good hand. sell. Like, yeah. I thanked his family, him and his family for everything they've, you know, brought to my family's life growing up in Pittsburgh. Sure. Then I think I left this week say, hey, Rudy, why don't you get another one for the fucking Yinzers, pal? Mm-hmm. And then saluted. Got a good pal out yeah. of the room. What did he say? Nah, we're good. No, he gave it, all right. Huh. Yep. It was like, it was it was a good exit from yeah. that particular suite. It was. <laughs> it was a good exit from that they particular They enjoy it. Sometimes. We hung out with Brandon Bean for a while. He's the man. How was it? He just is. Listening, like just... His guy right here, too. Oh, he's told me his name. Very good with names. From behind, he looks like Patton Oswalt. No, nope, they're not It anymore. was not no, It was not Patton Oswalt. Oswalt. I didn't even think of that mm-hmm. while we were there. I should know. His, <laughs> his son's a long snapper. Mm-hmm. When he's obviously sitting oh. next to Brandon. I'd assume he's... Yeah, pretty important. Yeah. Fairly important. Assistant GM. Very nice. He was over... Everybody was overly kind. Yeah. 
to us literally in there, but just like watching them take in the different drills was cool. Like it was like, okay, this is what the combine's actually for. Cause these are the decision, you know, mm -hmm. like this is the decision maker right here, pretty much. You know, obviously you got a scouting department and everybody feeds ideas and everything, but there's only a certain amount of people pulling the trigger on actual draft day on who's coming. So like watching him watch was cool. Like it was, and I, he was very nice for letting us do that. We just kind of walked in. You did. So I don't know if he felt like he couldn't kick us out. Mm. So that if that's the case, sorry, they saw about yeah, it. Right. It was really cool though, like to get to watch his brain work in real time with things that are happening, and then getting clarity on something, and then pulling up like a play from like college, like watching it. Uh -huh. Like it was. Did they ever tell you like, hey man, I'm trying to trying to watch these guys run here? You got Mind you, uh, give me some time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so shut up. I took the hint a couple times. I was like, Ooh, yeah, I'm ruining it. This has been, this has been a pretty heavy talking situation here for about <laughs> nine, ten minutes here. Thirteen people have just gone through whatever this drill is. Mm -hmm. So then you kind of sit back. What, what, say his name again, ZD Bevy. Brian Ganey, assistant GM. Okay. Nice. Okay. Makes sense. Hey, Brian Ganey, I'm going to let you know that's on me. That is 100% on me. I sure uh -huh. Got it right. Got it right. But you, hey, thanks for your kindness too, pal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The handshake. And on the other side, who was that? Oh. Don't remember either, but he, he so was a good guy as well. We met so many football people. Yeah. So many, we met scouts, you know, that are still hitting the road every single for different teams yeah. as they're walking through the hallways to their particular team and they potentially watch us on their phone while they're on the road. You know, it's like, it's pretty cool to hear who's listening where and we got to remember that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. We, we, we got to remember these things, AJ. We got to remember these things. Yeah. Sometimes we. Sometimes it's easy to forget that people are listening. It's wild to think about. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. wild. <laughs> Where's the adult? Where's the adults? Yeah. Where? Why are you? <laughs> oh man, we watch every single day. Don't. What are we doing? We don't, you we don't do? need you to. We don't need you watching no, no. this shit. No, no, no. Yeah, we don't take it serious. Okay. Thank Sounds you. Good. Sounds That's good. That's really good news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're just passing time. We're on the road a lot. But it was cool to, like, see – because for some people, that is the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know? Like, for some people in that building, they've traveled the roads, scouted these guys, recommended them to, you know, GM or assistant GM. And it's like how they're cutting their teeth in the business. Like, if you find somebody somewhere and they end up being very good, it's like you now have – Resume builder. Here we go. Like, you're known as a guy that can kind of – pick a needle out of the haystack type of thing. And those scouts are probably nervous as well because they've turned in all the reports. They know the guys that they've mm -hmm. reported on, dudes they've talked up, maybe. Oh, you're gonna, this guy might not run a great 40, but you're going to love him in the meeting. Wait till he, he's going to blow you away on the whiteboard. And the guy comes in, he's dumb as a rock, and the scout's just like, oh, I'm going to kill hey, myself. Hey, yeah, you. We're never listening to anything you yeah. say ever. Get out. Mm -hmm. now, how about yep. that? Like, that is kind of yeah. how you could feel. I don't think I don't know if that's actuality because it's hard to know who's going to be great and who's not because there's so much that goes into it. But you could see in some of the suites that we were in, and we got to be in a lot of them. Like, oh, that guy's definitely pulling for that guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? like mm -hmm. it is like that particular scout right there is pulling. Somebody runs a fast forty that from one of these schools that we've never heard of, and you like see actual like, okay, do it. Yeah, like <laughs> let's go. You know, it's. It's cool to see, like, because they're super invested, those people. Super uh, yeah, invested. I'd say. Super I'd invested say. in the combine. And then you think about, like, f fans and us, it's just like, we're invested, but it's like, oh, Xavier Worthy ran a 4 2 1. There's guys that are like, my entire family's life yeah. mm -hmm. depends on this. <laughs> it's 40 <laughs> right here. Running. It's crazy. It, is a, it was a crazy thing to kind of witness, Tom. Well, and then those, like, up and comers, too. Like, I mean, you don't really put it together until after the fact, but it's like, we probably bumped into like who knows like four or five guys that will eventually be gms like one day yeah. you know like the guy from the For texans sure. we met their uh their their like head pro scout and he's probably like my age but look what the texans did in the draft last year and like you know it's like that guy obviously is in a position you know you, you never know but i would assume like around league circles like he's probably a fast riser it's like mm -hmm. oh th this guy knows what he's doing and he was obviously locked in there but was he was very awesome gracious too. with his time yeah and like has been with casario for a long time but it's just like stuff like that where it's like oh shit like in 10 years we could look back and be like oh yeah we talked to that guy and he's gonna he might be one of like the hottest gm names there is it's great everybody was so nice and kind to us and thank you to rich eisen and yeah. the nfl network mm -hmm. it was this is the best way to do it that's the best way to do a combine right there Hey, how are we doing the combine next year? Uh, 
I'll ask Rich Eisen, is there any way you guys uh, need anything mm-hmm. so I can potentially get in there? Because it's like Area 51. They lock that place down. There was nobody. No. <laughs> up, we were literally the only two people outside of, like, security that were walking in the they hallways They weren't letting fans there. plug their heads Surprisingly, in the Surprisingly, no. They shut down. All, I, I mean, yeah, it is really. locked down. It is not easy to get in there. No. And as we were walking around, I'm like, like, we should not. This is really cool. This is the way to do the combine. <laughs> this, is the greatest, yeah. this is the greatest thing of all time. So thank you to Rich Eisen, Pam Litton. Mm-hmm. You know, can't spell Litton without lit in sure, there. That's right. At the beginning, she kind of coordinated all, kind of came together late, obviously. And yeah, I'm honored and thankful for uh, Rich Eisen for doing that. Let's get to a break. Okay, on the other side, we got Mad Melt. Let's go. Kuiper? Here we go. Yeah. About the combine experience. We just chatted about it a little bit. Let's hear what Mad Melt had to say about going to the combine. Sure. You know, as he has done every single year that he has existed. All right. Yeah, 30 years plus, probably. Whoa, 40. Long time. It's going to be worth a watch. We promise. (laughs) You all are the greatest. We're lucky to be back. We thank you. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five. 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 It's easier to ask someone about dying once he has broken free of its grasp, as my friend, my mentor, and my on-air partner, Chris Mortensen, once did. After Mort was diagnosed with stage four throat cancer in 2015, before fending it off in 2017, he was asked what he would think and what would go through his mind if he knew he were dying, as he almost did. Mort said he would think of all his incredible life experiences how blessed he has been, even with the heartbreaks along the way. He also added he would be sad to say goodbye to the people he loved, but he would be going to a place of glory. Chris Mortensen was born in Torrance, California, outside of Los Angeles in 1951. He served two years in the Army during the Vietnam War, married his wife Mickey and raised his son Alex, and established himself as one of the greatest reporters of all time, while being an even better man. Mort began his reporting career at his hometown newspaper, The Daily Breeze, before moving on to cover the Braves, Falcons, and the NFL at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. In 1990, he was among the first reporters hired for the all-sports newspaper, The National. Mort arrived at ESPN in 1991, he left behind the newspaper business to work on the NFL studio shows, Sports Center, the NFL Draft, and ESPN Radio. He was the reporter who could get to the bottom of the most difficult stories, yet still be the biggest prankster at the network, capable of making any and everyone laugh. Loosen up my shot and give me a little more headroom. We do not like a lot of face of me. on. No, that's actually in my contract, by the way. Mort was the one who knowingly and wittingly set up former Colts executive Bill Tobin for one of the most memorable sound bites in NFL draft history. You know, we got a guy up there. Who in the hell is Mel Kuyper, in a way? Mort impacted everyone he knew, often in ways he didn't even realize. A short time after Mort revealed he was battling stage four throat cancer and taking leave from ESPN, then Cardinals wide receiver Larry Fitzgerald scored a game-winning touchdown that advanced Arizona to the NFC Championship game. In the heady moments of his heroics, Fitzgerald still thought enough to send out a message to the man who had been on so many people's minds. Mark, I wanna tell you, man, we're we're thinking about you. And fight, baby. Love you, Mark. Everyone did. After Mort checked into the hospital in 2016, Peyton Manning delivered the scoop of his retirement for Mort to report while he battled cancer. The Mannings had known and trusted Mort for so long that there was no other consideration for giving that story to anyone other than Mort. And yet while he made his living reporting on some of the toughest guys in sports, nobody was any tougher than Mort himself. Mort battled back from a veritable death sentence. He endured intensive radiation treatments. He lost his hair, weight, but never his sense of humor, spirit, nor fight. He often showed up on TV when he was too tired and worn down to do it. It went on for years, like his own fight to regain his health. And yet through the years, Mort remained ESPN's reporting conscience, 
its most senior and trusted voice. He had seen so much, knew so many, and established himself not only as one of the greatest football reporters in history, but one of the greatest sports reporters in history. It is just one reason why so many turned to him for guidance on stories that mattered, because he did. Mort was a pioneer in this business, one of the first reporters to transition from newspapers to TV, making it possible for so many others to follow a similar path. Frigadelli, the legendary producer of NFL games, once said that if there were a Mount Rushmore for ESPN, Mort unquestionably would be on it. Mort was nominated for two Pulitzer Prizes, wrote two highly acclaimed books, won 18 journalism awards, was selected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame as the Dick McCann Award winner in 2016, and became the only sports writer other than the great Red Smith to win the George Polk Award for reporting. But Mort really didn't need any awards to validate his greatness. Other aspects of a life well lived already accomplished that. And here's the truth about a man we loved as much as we respected. If someone's life makes you sad when it ends, it's because it was wonderful when it happened. Mortz truly was. He lived a life that touched so many others, full of faith and purpose, all leading to his ultimate and final accomplishment. Chris Mortensen is headed to his place of glory. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay. Damn it! <laughs> Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this glorious Monday, March 4th, 2024. Hour three of the sports program starts right now. Sports are glorious. Sports are the greatest things on earth. Sports are what we get to cover every single day, and we are a collective group of doofuses who are allowed to be the sports stooges in some people's lives, keeping them informed on the greatest thing in the world, which is competition in sport. The talks the table is here. At Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Con man, great day today. Yeah, fantastic day. It is really great to be back, genuinely. I had a big-ass grin on my face driving in today with talk, and it is nice to see you guys again. It's always weird because we spend so much time together, so when we are off for you know two weeks such a long time not seeing each other it's it's like a big reunion on days like today yeah and you do you know i agree i share the same sentiment it is nice to get back and share some stories how about you getting back in the back in the chair with the back porch barber yeah. hey that yeah. was nice that, 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 that was a big deal the biggest news of of the layoff that, Truly. Legit. yeah because Truly. this morning jc made his way to the thunderdome which he does every single week and we appreciate the hell out of it's hard to just get a barber appointment in indiana with mm -hmm. good barbers yep. throughout you know what our schedule is in this entire thing so jc is literally the thunderdome's barber he comes once a week and cuts everybody's hair one day he just took a little bit too much out of the mullet mm -hmm. that connor did not appreciate yeah. understatement Connor protested. <laughs> he did. Mm -hmm. Connor would go out and find another barber yep. to cut his hair for yeah. last few months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about three months. But over break, right. you went to Colorado, you went up to Massachusetts, you came back, and you said, you know what? JC did a lot of good for my hair before he did that one mistake. He cuts everybody else's hair, and he does a great job. Well, uh... I might have slept through a uh, hair appointment I had on Saturday. Oh, no! Oh, Come I on, really, dude! I really, I, really, I really just couldn't show my face back there again after sleeping through it, so we're back. 
Hey, 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 we're back. Yo, listen. Come on, it's good news. You could have just baby faced there. You could have. Could you not have? I don't know. Yeah, honest but guy. Let bygones be bygones. Hey, we're J- back. JC will find his way back in your heart. Oh, yeah. Well, he has. I mean, you took a photo of us earlier. I was grinning like the butcher's dog, as Gumpy would say. You actually mm-hmm. were. Yeah, I do recall that because your hair looks phenomenal. The mullet is coming together nicely. Thank Many you. people have referenced it, not only here, but whenever I've, you know, in my travels. Nice. Mm-hmm. Some people say, you know, Carr's got a good, good helmet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple mm-hmm. people yeah. said while I was hiking. I appreciate on, like, that. A dessert Island. So, I mean, the mullet's making some conversation waves. Yeah, it's going to stay for a long time. I think when it f- initially happened, I-, I FaceTimed you and I was like, we might have we might have something here. And now that we're, what, a year plus into it, I, I don't see uh, the end of the tunnel. Ty, how about him mullet. adding a mustache, though? I, it's, I mean, it's just perfect. Yeah. It's, Which, it's perfect. I, I think it needs. I don't know if you shaved it recently. I did. Okay. I did. Yeah, I can tell because mm-hmm. it, it once it gets a lot more full. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to appreciate it. Just, but, just yeah. as we're kind of talking about this, it's kind of all hitting me. That mustache. That hairstyle, mm-hmm. that tattoo, yep, that arm, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is just like he's a movie character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Um, There's most, the tattoo. Most movie characters have nice triceps, as you pricks pointed out for me. Uh, but no, no, no but, we didn't say. Anything. <laughs> but, you said there was a lot of landscape. <laughs> uh, no, I heard what you said. I, I heard what you said. Now, did I do 10, 10, uh, 10 reps of trice right before this hour? Perhaps. But that's you just try to wake him up a little that's bit. That's because you guys, you guys are making me better. I, I, I mean, that's what the tattoo is really all about, too. It, it looks is. backwards. It like, it looks upside down. That should be your bicep on top. I, I hear what you're saying, Nick. <laughs> hey, hey, Nick. Hey, Nick, don't throw stones. I'd like to see your arm extended out without it flexing. Okay, buddy? Nick's got a lot going on in his life right now. Yeah? Uh, That's fine. He, um... That was that was tough. It was a bad it was a bad decision on my part. Would I change it? No, no I wouldn't why because wouldn't that's I? who I am. That's now, what life's about. Now that's what life's about. Now exactly I'm even right. more. You guys are motivating me to be better. That's what I appreciate yeah. about this. Every single decision that you've made has led you to right here. Bingo. So good, bad, and different. Let's We're on go. To Cincinnati. And if, bingo. Well, well said. Well said. Boom. <laughs> good, bad, or indifferent. We're on Cincinnati. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yahtzee. And anytime you need to be remembered or reminded, you just go ahead and flex for yourself one time, maybe. Yeah. Forget. Nope. Nope. <laughs> only when I, only if I need to. So you're just going to leave it sag the yeah. whole time. Yeah. Going to look out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, look, I'm me. I, I can only be me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna flex for these people. It's not as if flexing does much for Speaking it. Speaking of mustaches, Artie Smith uh, does not have one right now. He's currently the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive coordinator. Exactly. We have heard potentially that his contract talks have stalled, although they are in agreement until he gets the uh, yeah. mustache back, <laughs> okay. and then they'll be able to complete good. the contract. But Tone, I think you guys got a good one there after getting a chance to chit chat with people running it. You you know the style that he has of offense. Pittsburgh people love that type of shit. Yeah, if if, if you do recall when that uh, hire happened, I went to war with my own. Okay, I'd go to oh. war with the Yinzers because a uh, lot. I don't know if it was all Yinzers. It was a lot of football fans who have just kind of looked at Artie the last two years as a head coach, and they forgot kind of who he has, who he is as an OC, and how successful his running game has been. And you know, if you don't have a quarterback that throws an interception every time you go to the red zone, you're going to be a lot better on offense. So I am super excited, super eager to see what the Steelers' offense is. And, and yeah, like Artie's going to run the ball, and that's he's going to establish the run, which when you don't have an elite premier quarterback is what you have to do. Whoa, what were you saying? I don't know what you were saying. We'll see how Kenny Pickett grows into his yeah. next season, which is a big one for him. Big it's a big one. A lot of people have said, obviously, he knows it. But I think Artie Smith will do well. You know, he was able to really do great things down in Tennessee whenever yeah. he was the OC. And I think the city of Pittsburgh will love the style in which he plays because there's explosives as Iffy. well. Speaking of explosive, uh, you added some ink as well that has somehow slipped through the cracks here for the first two hours and 15 minutes. You, Y'all saw your forearm there looks sweet. Yeah, I had it. Whoa, 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 it's shining. Yesterday, uh, that is the Greek goddess of family. Because um, that's what it's about. Yeah, that's right. what it's about. And that's then right. the uh, there's some fat flowers on the back end, which are my uh, daughter's and wife's birth flowers. So what, what's the goddess's name? Hestia. Nice. He thought, I, he thought I wasn't going to know it. I know 100%. him, and he thought... <laughs> the way you said it was, come on. The, the, describing the goddess without <laughs> yeah. utilizing the name? Yeah, I, I agree. There was a question, but he just got it yesterday. True. Yeah. Yeah, he, he knows it right now. It's fresh in his mind, but not fresh in your mind has been the thought you were going to get a sleeve. Remember, yeah, this yeah. has been a long time coming. He watched the World Cup, oh. and he saw every single soccer player with sleeves. He said, that's so cool. <laughs> and then he went to work on one of them, and he... Takes a long time. Takes a long time. Tattoos. I sat for seven hours yesterday for this one. Tony. How do you do it? I was there for nine, sat for seven. It looks sweet. And then I gotta go back. I gotta go back in a month to get the rest of 
we will finish the sleeve, which will probably be another seven hours. But yeah, no, I love the patience you all have. How, how long was yours? I mean, this took this took an hour. Let's see that I thing was, again. And I was losing. Nope, I'm good. <laughs> and, and I was losing my mind. Let's see. Wait. Come on, well, hey, you know we'll check in on it a month from now. We'll check in on it a month from now. No, 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 no! Don't, don't feel. Oh. Oh, I see it again. <laughs> Hold on, let me turn it down a little. Just, well, I can't see it. Was it. I don't know what the bottom of it says. The first time seeing it. Okay. <laughs> All right, you're gonna get to work. You're gonna get to work. One month from now. And, that, and that's one of the reps right there. I'm doing. You know. This, one month from now. Maybe we'll, maybe two or three. We'll do a check in with the tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe we don't check in. All right. Speaking of checking in, ladies and gentlemen, we had a man. Well, I was lucky enough to be alongside who had boots on the ground at the combine. Ladies and gentlemen, great friend of the program, Mad Mel Kuyper. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, boys. Oh, it's an honor. It's great to be back. NFL combine draft season, best time of the year. We all know it. Yeah, we absolutely do, Mad Mel. Excited to see you around again. You look fantastic. I got to be with you at the combine. What was the combine experience like for you, and uh, what did you learn? Did you learn anything over there, Mad Mel? Well, everyone knows the combine's, you know, uh, kind of the social hour for everybody every single year. Uh, but but you hear from all these insiders, all these different people, hey, I'm hearing this from this guy. I'm hearing this about this player. That's all horse shit, okay? When you go to the combine, or at least when I go to the combine, what you do is you tell people what they need to do, okay? <laughs> That's, it's as simple as that. Listen, I have the keys to success. I know exactly what every single team in the NFL needs to do to win a Super Bowl next year, okay? Now, granted, there are about you know, 17 to 18 teams, and it doesn't matter what the fuck they do in the draft. <laughs> They're not going to have a, uh, you know, a chance in hell to win. But that, hey, that doesn't mean I don't know what they need to do to kind of you know, get over the hump, so to speak, and not be a horseshit franchise. Uh, for example, talk to a couple people. You know, uh, Brandon Beat, GM of the Buffalo Bills, a uh, good friend of mine, close personal friend of mine. At least I consider him a close personal friend. Uh, pretty simple. Got in there. You know, I mean, we were, we were kind of trading notes a little bit, and I just told him straight up, hey, listen, Brandon, all right? You need an explosive talent on the offensive end, whether that be you know tight end, maybe another running back, maybe a guy in the Ooh. slot, or maybe you know guy on the outside. Because it's pretty simple, okay? We saw what happened last year in the playoffs. You know the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. You know the big bad wolf. Uh, obviously, you know no. no uh, listen, I'm not going to get into that, okay? The big bad wolf. He, he's been put down, but. Chiefs Holic? Is what? that what you're talking about? Yeah, right I'm, I'm talking about Chiefs Holic. Okay. He was not at the playoff game in Buffalo. No, he wasn't. He wasn't because they they put him down like a dog, like he oh. deserved to be put down. Okay, <laughs> but again, that's neither here nor there. I just, I, but I told Brandon Bean, pretty simple. Hey, listen, you get an explosive talent unless you want, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid, all the boys to come into Buffalo in the playoffs. And, you know, kind of treat it like a fucking middle school snow day, okay? They're doing <laughs> snow angels on the field after the game. They're playing around, throwing snowballs, having a fun, making a mockery of the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills have all the requisite talent they need to make a deep run in the playoffs, you know, win the division damn near every single year. Great football team, but you got to get over that big bad wolf. you got to get an explosive piece. He knows that whether or not he wants to listen. I'm not going to give you, you know, the full book on who I told him to take, who I like, you know, which guy. Guys, I think he kind of unlocked that extra potential of Josh Allen that we've seen all these years. Um, but I let him know, okay? And yeah. whether or not he wants to take that advice, that's completely up to him. I did see you getting escorted out of the Buffalo Bills suite. That wasn't because you were just telling him what he needs to do? That no, was, no, no, absolutely not. You know, I, it, tough to find a, a bite around there. So I, I grabbed a, a burger or two, you know, maybe a couple bags of chips. Apparently, I, I was not allowed to do that, okay? Uh -oh. No one told me, hey, don't eat all their fucking food. Got a great spread. Pumpkin no pie. one's touched it. Pup didn't have any pumpkin pie, okay? If they had pumpkin pie, like, listen, that's Mel's, okay? And everyone, yeah. everyone knows that's hey, Mel's. Okay, so after you get escorted out of the Buffalo Bills suite and, uh, you know, it sounds like Sounds like Brandon Bean was very uh, welcoming to all of your ideas and opinions on how to run an NFL team, even though you've never done that. No, right? but he should be. He yeah, should I, be. agreed, agreed. You got, you found your way into the cold suite, didn't you? I think you went down and saw yourself at the cold suite. Is yeah, that right? Ooh. Yeah, I did. You know, everyone knows that uh, Chris Ballard and IGM, the Indianapolis Colts, have a bit of a spotted pass. He's kind of shit on me a couple times in our past, you know, draft coverage, draft spectaculars, and that's fine. You know, we could be at odds. Uh, we didn't really talk too much personnel. Kind of the first thing that jumped off the page when I sat down with him was, 
holy shit, this son of a bitch is jacked. Okay? <laughs> so I don't know if this guy needs to be making personnel decisions. Maybe he needs to, you know, institute himself as the strength and conditioning coach. Ooh. I considered that. You know, I mean, he's absolutely massive. His lettuce is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Very, very similar, you know, Boston Cotter back in your studio. Wow. He's got a very nice kind of feathery mullet coming out of the back mm. of his hat. But I basically just told him, hey, listen, if you get your offensive and defensive line to kind of get all the same uh, strength conditioning plan that you're on, because you are a big, mean son of a bitch right now, then maybe we won't have to worry about Anthony Richardson getting hurt in the third game oh, of the NFL season oh, next year. Oh, hey, oh, listen, oh, listen, oh, listen, oh. listen. That's all I said. I, I wasn't saying, hey, get this guy, get this guy, get this guy. I think Anthony Richardson has all the tools necessary to be an elite NFL quarterback, but I think if they want to do that, Chris Ballard needs to get down to the weight room and start clagging and banging with the boys because he is fucking huge. Okay, uh, I appreciate hearing that as an Indianapolis Colts fan. I like to know that, you know, we got some dogs all over the place. Colts do need to protect Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson needs to protect Anthony Richardson. I think everybody has high hopes. Uh, I, did I see, you know, because I think I was there with you, actually, uh, we ran into a friend of the program, Artie Smith. Ooh, huh? How about oh, that? Really? You want to see for the Let's Pittsburgh go. Steelers, uh, Mad Mel. You and him go way back, right? Is yeah, we, we do. We had already been friends for a very long time. Uh, he's uh, you know, one, of my, one of my confidants in the NFL. I can go to him anytime. Hey, are my, are my eyes deceiving me on this guy? Or No, okay, I'm right. Yeah, always am. Um, so, you know, he, he usually <laughs> kind of just uh, he lets me know if I'm on the right course. And, again, you know, very rarely do I not have the correct take on a prospect of the NFL draft. Very simple with Artie this year, though. Uh, kind of just so I, you know, damn near uh, gave me a heart attack, knocked me off my feet. He doesn't have his mustache right now. Sorry, what? Wow. What? Did, well, yeah. I, 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 you know what? I did the exact same thing, kind of double take, and I just said, listen, Artie, got to grow the fucking mustache back, okay? If you want anyone in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to respect you, you got to grow the mustache back, okay? Everyone's saying, hey, you know, Artie and Kenny Pickett had a great meeting down in Florida. That's fine and dandy. That's great. You don't grow the mustache back, it doesn't fucking matter what you do, okay? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how Kenny plays. We all know that mustache has you know, uh, third world or fourth world powers, okay? <laughs> that thing could get Kenny Pickett to be an NFL, you know, an, an all-pro, a Pro Bowl type player. If he has a clean upper lip next year, look for the Pittsburgh Steelers to do the exact same fucking thing they've done the last six or seven years, kind of limp into the playoffs, nine and eight, Jeez, and get geez. embarrassed in the first round. Oh. Artie, do the right thing, okay? Do the right thing. Kind You've had agree. time to kind of reflect and you know, be on the other side of the world, be in different places, kind of enjoy your time uh, now that you're not an NFL head coach anymore. But Pittsburgh needs you, okay? And they need that mustache. And I think he knows that, Pat. Yeah, I think there was somebody from Pittsburgh that told him that immediately upon mm -hmm. you telling him that as well, Mad Mo. That, is there a city better suited for an offense coordinator with an incredible mustache? There's not. Better than Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? There's not, no, I don't not. think, either. I think he understands that. Sounds like he understands that from mm -hmm. me listening to you talk at him, by the way. Hey, Boston Connor has a question for you, Matt. Yeah, Matt Mel, first of all, thank you for the kind words on the hair. Your flow also looks fantastic. But, you know, the combine is really the NFL spring break. Everyone knows that. Everyone's mingling after the events of the day, you know, are done. They're going out. They're having a good time. Have you experienced the nightlife? Have you been able to try all the things that Indianapolis has to offer, or have you heard anything about what everyone has been doing around the city this week? No, yeah, I've absolutely experienced it. You know, I think everyone just assumes, oh, you know, Mad Mel Kuyper, this guy's the hardest son of, uh, hardest working son of a bitch in the NFL, and I am. There's yep. no two ways about that, but that doesn't mean you don't need to, you know, blow off a little steam. So everyone always talks about, oh, you know, Peyton Manning's kind of got his own private room at, you know, St. Elmo's, one of the most historic steakhouses in the United States. I have my own goddamn floor at that place, okay? <laughs> so I go in, you know, kind of just, they they treat me like a goddamn chic, you know, kind of <laughs> put, put me on a pillow, lift me up so I don't have to, you know, walk back to my <laughs> room, do that kind of stuff. I will say Indianapolis, great city, okay? Great hosting city. Don't, don't need to really walk outside. Uh, honestly, uh, there, there weren't too many homeless people down there. I don't what? know if they, you know, kind of did the same okay. thing that they did a couple years of the Super Bowl in LA, get the street sweeper out and kind of shovel all the poop and the homeless people just Smart. out of there so that, you know, all these uh, different GMs and town evaluators don't have to deal with it. 
uh, great restaurants. I am a little disappointed in the lack of titty bars around the circle downtown, okay? <laughs> Everyone knows, you know. It's the middle of downtown. That's fair. Well, you know, yeah, it's the middle it's of downtown, true. but uh, who doesn't love a good titty bar, you know, right Jeez. next to a steakhouse? Jeez. I know I do. Jeez. Um, so, you know, outside of that, uh, it, it's great being able to kind of rub elbows, rub shoulders with all the different, uh, you know, personnel, team personnel. But at the same time, you know, we're not here to, to play grab ass, okay? I know certain guys love playing grab ass down there. Hey, let's let's go get dinner with this guy and this guy, and we can joke and we can laugh and take pictures. This is, this is a fucking work trip for me, okay? All right, so I'm not I'm not there to have fun and play games, okay? So yeah, you can glean some information from the nightlife. Uh, we're we're here to we're here to put food on the table for our family, okay? Sorry. So that's that's the way I uh, I treat the combine. Now I heard from one of the scouts as we were walking by them in the halls, and I happened to be walking alongside of you or whatever, man, Mel. Did you take a meeting in the bathroom of the Oakmont? Is that what happened? What? Did I hear about that? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Uh, this week, uh, the Oakmont kind of turned into my place of business. Uh, I walk in there, and and not only is the atmosphere lovely, uh, the uh, the food's delicious. I actually heard. I, I'm listen. I'm not a big espresso martini guy. I know wow. you got a couple in the office. I heard that they Think actually use it. real Nicaraguan coffee beans in the espresso <laughs> martini, which is true a, story. Oh yeah, it's just unbelievable play. You know, you don't see a lot of places doing that so after this weekend uh yeah I, I guess you could you could basically say i'm the fucking co-owner of the oakmont that place <laughs> is mine they might as well put you know mad mel's the oakmont right up right up on the marquee because uh because that's my joint now all right well hopefully we'll uh, stop getting cars towed from that parking lot right out front if you can maybe maybe do that because we do like to go to that place yeah you know, it's nice it's yeah nice. it's a very nice place the oakmont is fantastic yeah, love it but boy, those tow trucks seems to be They're pretty quick. They are yeah. Quick. Yeah. Tough yeah. to tough to park down there if you're not an ant. So uh yeah, you know, maybe they should figure something out. But again, you know, that's that's the kind of long term stuff. I'm more of the uh the day to day uh, yeah, yeah. weekend guy. Of course, so. yeah, you're a grinder. We exactly. know that, Mel. Exactly. Uh, Tone's got a question for you. Yeah, Mr. Mad, um, I think everyone, not just me, holds you in the highest regard as for as far as your judgment of character, your judgment of brains, your judgment of an overall human. Uh, so my question there for you is, who was who were you most impressed with uh, when you were talking at people at the Combine this weekend? Well, that's a good question, Tone. Uh, you know, obviously talked to a lot of uh, big-time movers and shakers, you know, guys who are in high-level positions who uh, have kind of been uh, waiting on my words of wisdom with bated breath uh, ever since they got into the league. One guy who really knocked my socks off, i got to say it, Indianapolis Colts head coach Shade Steichen. Wow. Yes! And I'll, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Okay, listen, everybody, uh, they love Gardner Minshew. He's got the mullet. He's got the mustache. The Fu Man Chew. He lives in the conversion van. He's an NFL quarterback Moxie, who lives yeah. in a conversion van. Ha ha, that's great stuff. We love it. That's awesome. You're an NFL quarterback. Buy a fucking house. But that's neither here. That's, that's <laughs> neither, no. Hey, listen, that's neither here nor there. Okay? Let's be very, very clear about what Gardner Minshew is. Now, I understand he went to the Pro Bowl last year. He almost got the uh, Indianapolis Colts into the playoffs. Wow. Obviously, we all remember that very difficult loss at home in the Lod House Thank against you. the Houston Texans Stratos. last week of the season. Lod House, Lod House. But Stratos. I had Gardner Minshew as a D-plus grade coming into the draft when I evaluated him initially. Shade Steichen got that guy to a fucking Pro Bowl. <laughs> Okay, you look at the Indianapolis Colts roster on paper, that's a four-win football team. Okay, simple as that. But because Shade Steichen's braid is so fucking big, it's oozing out of his ears and dripping onto his, you know, Colts pullover that he's wearing on Sundays, if Anthony Richardson could stay healthy, and I believe he can because of the coaching of Shade Steichen and obviously his previous experience with a guy like Jalen Hurts who made a massive jump his second season to start a quarterback, I think the Indianapolis Colts are a dark horse team to make a wow. deep run in the playoffs deep. this year because Shane Steichen's brain is about as big as Albert Einstein's. I like that. Mine, maybe, as well. I like, well, I don't know if anybody has a brain as big as yours. Uh, speaking of being big, I like to hear that about Shane Steichen, but there's this one photo I saw. I, I don't know who took it. Uh, is Kevin O'Connell 10 feet tall? And how <laughs> tall are you, Matt Mel? What the hell's going <laughs> on? I'm a, I'm a very respectable 5'11", 6 foot on a good day. You're right. Sure. Kevin O'Connell made me look like I was 4'8". I mean, is that son of a bitch 18 feet tall? <laughs> How did that not that guy not play in the NFL for 18 years? Should have been a starting quarterback for you know. I mean, goddamn, he could. 
basically with his wingspan, he can throw it and then just reach his arm down to the goal line and catch it himself without moving his feet. It's unbelievable. Again, love Kevin O'Connell. Don't love that he made me look like a fucking pipsqueak in that picture, but that's what's going to happen when you're uh, you know, with the best of the best that the NFL has to offer at the NFL Combine. All right, last question here from Ty. Go ahead, Ty. Well, hello, Mad Mel. I uh, hope you're doing well this morning. It's good to see you as always. Um... Listen, I'm just curious. I noticed that in every single one of those pictures you took, you're wearing the same suit. So I'm just curious, did, did were you only at the Combine one day? Did you only work one day? I mean, you talk about how you're the hardest working guy ever. You're there one day? Like, what, what's going on there? Well, I don't know, Ty. I mean, are we in Milan at the fucking fashion show? I'm there for work, asswipe, Okay. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to go and play grab ass with people, oh, hey, look at my, my Versace suit. Look at my, you know, listen. All right, very simple. Yes, I wore the same suit and, uh, and shirt combo and tie combo every single day. You ever heard of Steve Jobs? Okay, turtleneck every single day. Take one decision out of your day. It's a very beautiful, nice suit. $79.99 off the rack at Macy's, okay? Very, very Ooh. dependable. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm not there uh, trying to, you know, get all the girls to look at me and say, oh, geez, Mad Mel, this guy's fucking sexy. I'm there to let these NFL GMs and pro personnel, you know, staff know, hey, this is what you got to do to win a Super Bowl. I mean, the fact that you'd even ask that question tells me how big of a dipshit you are and how much, just, honestly, just how clueless you are. So I won't be taking any fucking questions from you for a long time, oh, my oh, friend. Jeez. You know what? As a matter of fact, fuck this. I'm done. Okay, I've given you guys another this bullshit. Whoa. Fuck you guys. Whoa. What? Whoa. What did I say? Oh, what the? Ty, way to go. Come Is Mad Mel still there? You know, I don't got to do this. You know, they act like I don't got anything to do. I mean, I got hours and hours of film I could be looking at. These fucking assholes are treating me, you know, like as a stand up comedy special. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm fucking sick of it. Okay? I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. Fuck them. Whoa. Gee. I... Sorry. Die. He's still. Uh, look how you made Mad Mel feel. That's an honest question. I thought it was a good conversation. Oh nah, you, you did attack him a little bit. You attacked him a little bit. I think he overreacted, but that's classic Mad Mel. I think we can, you know, be, besides the way that thing abruptly ended. My, what was that all about? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, professionalism, maybe, you know, just a, a tad bit. That's all right. Draft season's Mad Mel season. Yeah, he sure is. Yeah, I think we got some stuff out of there before the the terrible ending. You're going to have to make that right with him, I think. Yeah. I, we all probably yeah. were. He, and it is kind of a stand-up routine, to be honest with you. <laughs> a little bit. Like, like he bit. said that at the end, I, and I hope he doesn't take any offense to it. He's the best in the game. Yeah. Yeah, He's man, the he absolute is. best like, in the game. Always. But there was a lot of good stuff that we could take out of there. He agreed with the Artie Smith type thing. But how about whenever he was talking about Shane Steichen's big brain, boys? Look out. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Did you hear, hear that? that? I did. Did you hear that? I did. Did you hear that in the back? Yep. Okay, we don't know what's real and what's not real whenever Mad Mel Kuyper is talking to us about anything, but I heard him say that Shane Steichen's brain is a big one. Also, Kevin O'Connell did look like he was nice. 20 feet tall in that. Joining us now, a guy who finally got internet service back. Obviously, he's, you know, it could be us, too. We have no idea. Yeah, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. A.J., Mad Mel is firing early in draft season, bub. I did not uh, see it ending that way. Unfortunately, <laughs> Ty's question really seemed to set him off. Mel was, all, Mel was about ball. That's about it, right? He didn't care about fashion. He didn't care about anything else. I think he was wearing the same suit today, Ty. Yeah. You didn't even mention that. Yeah. I, 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 it might be just his draft season suit. That might be his thing. Listen, oh. I made a mistake, okay? I'm big enough to admit that, but, you know, to to make that kind of, you know, proclamation <laughs> and get all pissy like that, that's, uh, yeah, I, I, I'll make it right. I'll make it right. All right, AJ, let's talk to you about some of the stuff that, you know, we kind of acknowledged at the Combine. Fastest group of humans of all time. Did you see that as well? And do you ever think to yourself, because you ran, what, 4'4", four, four, this guy ran? Yeah, 4'4". 4'4", 245, I think, uh -huh. is what he was at. So 4'4", 245, yeah, with a guy, you're talking about Caleb Williams said I'm not doing medical. AJ was actually just lying right to people's faces about his medical, okay? Ended up being number, right? Right? Not lying. I'm just, I'm not doing their work for them. If they, if they want to see if I have surgeries or I have any cartilage in my knee, you can check it out yourself. I like it. Okay, so I'm we're holding gonna, why information. Why would you volunteer? Why would you volunteer? Yeah, you know, it's, my left knee hurts a little bit, but my right ankle really hurts. No, say nothing. Say you feel amazing. The medical thing with Caleb was a big conversation. I immediately just thought of you. I was like, 
AJ was like, yeah, you want to figure it out, figure it out. Good mm-hmm. luck. There's doctors. It's all, you know what I mean? It's out they here. Do, and they do. That's why they make you get 15 MRIs and have everybody look at you. Yeah, they'll look into you uh, deeply. But anyways, AJ, whenever we walk around this combine and we just start hearing everybody kind of chatter, it's like humans have evolved to a point where we're faster than we've ever been before. Not only the fastest 40 in the history in 421, but six players run a sub 4-4 in 40-plus inch vertical. It's like humans are so explosive right now. If... And I'm not saying this is going to happen in our lifetimes, but it certainly feels like with the chatter on here. If the aliens were to come down right now, Mm -hmm. and it was to be some sort of decathlon Mm -hmm. to see who, you know, if sports are involved at all, it's like, feels like the human species is at its peak right now. They are moving. Not only the 4-2-1, obviously, the fastest in history, the NFL combine, laser timed, can't cheat it at all with hand time. It is absurd how fast this 170-pound man, 165-pound man ran 40 yards. It's like humans have evolved to a point where we are so big. Tavondre Sweat, 366, AJ, moving like that. It's bananas, brother. It doesn't seem real when you watch it. I was just watching some of the drills, too. Like, yeah, the times are off the charts. I was watching the running backs go through the little running back drill or catch ball like into the flat and turn it up. And I'm thinking, these guys look, first off, they're so like Blake Corum, so stout, so strong, his lower body, like everything about him. I'm thinking, like, how do you bring these guys down when they get a full head of steam? You see their their jump cuts, everything they're doing. They just move like it's just not natural how well they move, I feel like. Well, and how about whenever you're talking about flipping the hips with these corners and, like, these wide receivers' body control nowadays is just, like, standard operating procedure where it used to not be like that. Like, it used to be, like, special to be – and I'm not saying guys weren't, you know, phenomenal at football back in the day. But it feels like with humans – getting to the point that we are and athletes getting to the point that we're getting with the work habits earlier in life that people are learning like these seven on sevens for these wide receivers and quarterbacks and everything like in corners are like in one-on-ones that go viral and content like people want to work in high school because it's content like want to go i want to get my feet better i want to make more absurd catches i want to practice every single day because that's just making content it's like there's almost a full different mindset on how you become great from these youngs who are like so mature. Here's Roma Dunze who wanted to get a 6.6 on a three cone <laughs> drill and stuck around until there was nobody else on the field afterwards. He ended up with a 6.8. I do not know what a good score is or what isn't a good score, but it's like these dudes are better, younger, faster, what? quicker, more mature too because the NIL stuff yep. that kind of has has hit them at a much younger age. It's a different – they say different generations. Like this one is a different generation it feels like, AJ. Yeah, it sure feels like they're moving like it. Also like the the leadership and camaraderie, you watch how they're, they're ending drills, they're all running down together and kind of mm-hmm. celebrating together when a lot of those dudes are meeting each other for the first time once they show up at the combine. They don't all know each other yet, I guess, but, man, it's – what, like, where do we – is there a ceiling? Is there a ceiling on the 40? What, what are we, we going to see someone break? Isn't four, there a book or – 418? Is that oh. going to be yeah, – I think uh, – I mean, Because yeah. I think there was some track person that did it, ran a very fast 40, a track person. Um, and they were showing it on the internet. I should have remembered it. But, yeah, what is the fastest that a football player – now, he's obviously a little bit undersized, right? That's 170 yeah. pounds or whatever. It's like, if he gets in the right offensive system, though, that doesn't matter. Nope. That doesn't matter, especially if he knows how to avoid hits. You know what I mean, AJ? Which, if you want any longevity, you will. And and watch any of the kind of slighter frame receivers out there. Like, they know. They have the instincts, the knack to find a way. Like, they're not ever really taking big shots. They're not just stepping out of bounds. They just have such a great feel for where the defenders are they know how to get down here's xavier worthy right in our grill jeez what a play us losing our minds on the sideline (laughs) with matthew mcconaughey a moment that i'll remember in my dying days (laughs) happening it was absurd (laughs) down there at the cotton bowl right in front of our faces but it's like i'm excited to watch these guys work i'm excited to see who makes it who doesn't make it i'm excited to see the surprises Mm -hmm. of this draft season with the lack of people working out now last year cj stroud threw you know so that's a massive ordeal that he threw and had the year that he had if you go back patrick mahomes i believe he threw tom brady obviously Mm -hmm. threw lamar jackson Threw Andrew Luck, RG3, both did not throw. Peyton Manning did not throw. Kyler Murray did not throw. So it's like everybody always wonders if the combine's going to continue to be something with people opting out, mm-hmm. kind of just like bowl season. Mm-hmm. I think people are going to watch. Did you see the crowd that was in Lucas Oil Stadium, AJ? 
Yeah, that's it. When did they start letting fans in? A couple uh, years ago? A couple years back, I think it was ex- like uh, it was an exclusive group. I think like the first time it was like 100 people. Yep. A couple hundred people were allowed in there. It's like a, a wild thing that you get to experience for once in a lifetime. Then it kind of expanded a little bit. I had heard from nobody of any like decision-making importance, I don't think, said that a lot of the football guys, scouts, were a little bit like – all right, because they were playing music as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. While the drills were happening, and there was fans in there, so like some of the scouts that we're talking about living and dying uh-huh. with guys that are the regional on the road scouts living in hotels, scouting somebody in hopes that that person becomes a big star, so that they can maybe climb the ranks of the scouting world and potentially go be a general manager. So I think they've tried to find a happy medium. All I know is that place was fucking packed. Yeah, so many Half people. Of the stadium. It was absurd. It was loud, too, at different times. Deep balls, obviously mm-hmm. enjoyed. You talked about the camaraderie. It's like, did you hear the crowd every time they ran down there? The crowd was like, hey, good workout, boys. Yeah, yeah. Good workout, boys. There was obviously some Michigan contingency there because of 18 yeah, Michigan Wolverines being there and working out. Saw some of the local heroes. Purdue had some fans, obviously, there. But a lot of people were just from Indianapolis. They were like... Love ball. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm very thankful that we got to see it and very thankful that Indianapolis still continues to host the NFL Combine because we appreciate it. The economy appreciates it. Mm-hmm. Everything. It is a beautiful event down here. Yeah, I mean, we pulled up and it, obviously it's not as crazy as like a Colts game downtown, but like there were people tailgating. There were a bunch of cars around there. Like yes. we had to make traffic. Yeah, we had to make like a pass around the stadium to get to actually get in there. Like it was I mean, I, and obviously, you know, when you when you open it up free to fans and they have to just go online, and I think it's kind of like a raffle type thing, but, like, still the amount of people that were down there, I mean, and even, like, downtown, not not right next to the stadium, like, there's, like, a, a, a palpable buzz down there. Like, it, it's it's really cool to see. Yeah, I don't know how the football people feel about it, AJ. Yeah, probably don't mean? love it. Like, how would, well, how would Bill Belichick have handled it? you think he would enjoy that if he wanted to go, hey, I'm going to get a closer look and sit down in the uh, in the concourse somewhere and he's surrounded by a bunch of fans? So listen to this. What they started this year, and I don't know how I, – actually, I don't know because I'm not down there as much, but with how many fans there were, you know, the NFL Network feed goes out on the Jumbotrons. Yep. So like Jerry Jones got booed in there. Oh, yes. oh no. You know yeah. what I mean? So Jerry's, Jerry's oh. trying to do business, you know, try to find the next cowboy – have been doing the combine in the way that the combine has been done for like the last 40 years. Yeah. Just kind of real chill, nonchalant. And all of a sudden, he's getting his ass booed. Yeah. Like, oh, what the hell is how? What the hell is this all about? A little baby face, little heel thing at the combine. I do wonder how Bill Belichick, because that place would have, oh, the oh booze would have been yeah. so loud. And Bill Belichick, I'm not going back to that thing ever. Mm-hmm. And maybe. Did any coaches not go? Did any head coaches not go this year? So yeah. we, we had heard through the grapevine that that is the. That's the next. Yeah. They started doing that. Didn't like McVeigh not go last mm-hmm. year? He wasn't or there. Bill, year either. Bill didn't. Yeah, because you can get the tape. And they said certain guys would just were coming in on like Sunday and just staying for Sunday and then leaving. But yeah, like a couple of the people we talked to, it's like one thing. It's one thing watching live, but like you literally can watch the entire thing on NFL Network. Football guys were there. All of us were watching. The jumbo truck, yeah, yeah. Ju- yeah, which was the, the you know, because that's where the clock was, that's where everything was. So you you get to feel it, which is what a live event is. Mm-hmm. But watching it, you kind of get similar thing, you know. And it was it was cool. It, whenever I mean, I'm chit chatting right there with Mr. Ganey, yep. mm-hmm. who's the assistant general manager of the Buffalo Bills, and uh, yeah, that was an interesting moment. Somebody in there said, "Yo," pretty much that we were up there because they don't tell you as Coach McDaniel, right. You know. <laughs> yeah, he was not happy. He looks so cool. So cool, yeah. dude. Always. I thought the way he handled that was cool. Yes. Like I think the other football people probably were like, when they met for dinner later or a drink, they're like, you handled that well. Yeah, mm-hmm. Nothing you can do. Yeah, you, you handled that well. It's uncomfortable for all of us, but it's a fun. It's become a fun little spectacle. Yeah. Yes. Did any of you go out? Any of you go out to uh, you know St. Elmo's or any of the hot spots and see all the you know the ground going on? Yeah, uh, places were packed. We we did not. Bruce uh, was we, Bruce is normally the guy who goes out and has the ear to the ground. Yeah, uh, checks O'Connell the O'Connell and uh, McCown were out on Friday night. Oh, okay. Did you did you talk to O'Connell? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There it is. All There's right, the guy. Yeah. Wait, what'd you say? Okay. So he's a great ball coach. Offered him a shot. That's so <laughs> nice. All right, so Coach O'Connell came up to me and Mad Mel, and we're like. I saw one of your guys uh, last night or whatever out and about. I'm like, really? And then he tried to describe. The way he described you was. Uh, How was it? What did he say? You know? What did he say? I, he was Strapping very complimentary. Like super complimentary. Yeah. You know, like super complimentary. Nice. He did say beard, but it was the 
Were you with uh, somebody from Illinois? Yeah, Eastern Illinois offensive line. Yeah, that would that would be uh, that would be Ben. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. There it is. There it is. Hey, he said great things about like very complimentary of He's you. He's a great nice. guy. You need to know that. Okay, yeah. I'm happy you guys had a good time. But yeah, that's what like that's why Indianapolis is like the perfect place for this thing. And I think the NFL people would say the exact same thing. I don't know if they're going to enjoy it becoming like a big people travel to the city event. Yeah. You know, because then all these things that don't have a lot of humans in them, potentially, that's why Indianapolis is like the perfect hosting city, because people come into town for conventions or whatever. And then these restaurants and everything just kind of become like there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like not only do you get the convention center, you also pretty much get you get all of downtown, Bingo. entire yeah. downtown. Yeah. You know, like you kind of get the it's like the perfect hosting city. That's why everybody loves it here. If it becomes one of those spectacle things, I do. I do worry, you know, that uh you could be drawing like because they had to have had ten thousand. I don't know what the number. Oh, was. Oh yeah, I bet it was ten thousand. They had to be. That's a good pool. Lot. That's a ton of people staying in India. It's a beautiful thing. We're lucky to have it. Hey, shout out to the combine. Congrats to all the boys who made some money, uh, including we'd assume Xavier. Were they, right in front of our face. He caught that deep. So oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, let's talk about a stone cold killer. Okay, AJ. And I'm not talking about that lover stock kill thing, which I did watch. What a psycho. Yeah, how was that? What a psycho. Good yeah, trailer. Some are good. She was she you're talking about a story of crazy, maybe the craziest human that has ever existed. Really? I don't want really? to okay. I don't want to give too much. Loves AJ. I don't want to give uh to be honest, <laughs> no. saw more of AJ on the picture than in the actual documentary. Okay, okay. so he shouldn't be worried. No. Like I said. But uh we're talking wild, wild creature. Wild animal. We're talking wild. Did not know those. Is were she walking. free? No spoil. Is she free? Is she walking the streets? That's spoilers. No, no spoilers. No spoilers. We're okay. No spoilers. Okay. All right. No spoilers. Okay. Okay. It's been out. Okay. That's that's news. That's news. You yeah. know, I, I need to I need to make sure people understand that they are potentially safe. But watching that, I was like, holy shit! These things exist out here. It's good to be reminded, isn't it, that there are people. That, crazy people out there. Uh-huh. This one is a whole new reminder. Okay, I'm going to watch that now. I'm intrigued. I saw the first, like, 20, 30 minutes, I believe. The lengths in which, I mean, it is, you should. Is it a love story? Is it a love triangle? Well, I don't even know. Kind you, of. How many people are involved? They're having sex. Okay. okay. They're okay. having sex. Okay. 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 And then, craziest human that has ever existed. Their story gets told. Okay. okay. Hmm. Does someone die? Well, yeah, it's in the... F- I mean, the I name of the killer. thing. You like ass. What's it called? Love, killer, stalker, stalker. murder? Love somebody's, stalker, killer, I think yeah. it's called Somebody's Murdered in this documentary, Love, Stalker, Killer. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think is what it All was. All right, so there is blood. <laughs> well. You never know. Unless. What if she got poisoned? It was wild. Did anybody watch anything else that was good? I'm trying to think. Dude, of- Dude 2. I- Holy shit. Unbelievable. Dune about two? Dune One. Oh yeah, Dune One's Dune very good. good. Oh yeah. I was told I would not like that show because you, the guy's name's Dragon Potato. It's sunk in Idaho. <laughs> you, you wouldn't like it. <laughs> Dragon Jeez. Potato. It's it's uh, add me to the list. It's sci-fi. It's yeah. sci-fi. It's so. sci-fi. Uh, Masters of the Air. You might. I don't know if you ever watched Band of Brothers or The Pacific, but it's about. I saw a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's about good. the uh, Air Force during World War II. It is very Shogun. Good. Very important out. group. Yeah, yeah, very tough good. Gig. Tough gig. Those guys have. Yes. What's it called? Masters of the Air. It's on Apple Elvis. TV Plus. The Elvis kid is the main guy, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. He's so handsome. He is. He's good. That kid, so Glenn Powell and him are just like the super they're, handsome. They're the next. He's also the bad guy in Dune 2. In Dune 2, yeah, he's in it. And, okay. he, and he is fucking strapped in it as well. The Elvis guy? The yeah. Elvis guy, yeah. Is he still talking like Elvis really? in Dune 2? No. Because he, he was in Masters of the Air. He, he is not talking like Elvis in Dune 2. He actually has a great um, Harkin and draw, if you will, in Dune 2. <laughs> what? All right, so I'm not, so I'm going to watch that, I think it sounds like. That Masters really? of the Air, Yeah, I'm going to watch. I think I, I heard one about one that's right up your alley. It's called Frogging. Um Apparently, there's this actually happens to people. People live in your house and you just don't know about it because they're yeah in like the base attic or something. Yeah, and then during the night they come out and just do stuff in your house while you're sleeping. Like oh, do your food, weird. they do weird things and touch you. I don't know. I'm not gonna watch Both. it. Weird things. Is this real? Is this real life or is this a series? No, it's a, it's a series. Yeah. No, but like it's but yes, a sitcom. It's real. Yeah. No, no, no. It's real life. It's based on real events. Yeah. What okay. ring cameras have been catching people? I assume at like I don't an know. alarming rate. I was just told yesterday to watch it. What's that called? Frogging? Uh, yeah, with a PH. Wow, that's fat. Mm-hmm. Farms. Avatar The Last Airbender. 
You would hate it, but it's so good. I can't wait to watch it. I can't wait to watch it. Anyways, yeah. you know what I'm excited to watch? And this is for shoot, brother. I cannot wait to watch the college uh, NCAA Women's Basketball March Madness. Hell yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. I legitimately can't because the amount of chatter that it has all garnered this year because we were watching history literally be broken numerous times by the same person in his phenomenal fashions mm-hmm. every single time. And like I think that's where we all kind of got hooked by this story because Angel Reese and this LSU team were dogs. Oh, yeah. And then you got Caitlin Clark in Iowa, and it was like it built up perfectly almost. It was mm-hmm. like a March Madness story that if they want to, you know, and say, we got to script this thing out, how do you want it? Here's how we want it. With some shit talk in the middle of it, and we were all captivated by all of it. Like the South Carolina team, I think a lot of us got introduced mm-hmm. to. How the coaches over there, Coach Daly and everything. How the LSU coach, like the storylines in women's college basketball are phenomenal in the sport hundred and something points is getting put up on a very regular basis. So this year, going into the season, I think we all had a little vested interest, didn't we? We had a little bit more mm-hmm. vested interest than maybe we had in the past. We apologize for that. But we certainly are enjoying the story that's being wrote this year. This girl from Iowa who's going to be an Indiana Fever player and win every WNBA championship right. from this season forward Hell until yeah. she decides to no longer win them alongside Miss Boston what? here right. in Indianapolis, Indiana. The way she has gone about doing what she has done, which is obviously historic, is stone cold, bro. Do you remember when she broke the women's all-time scoring record? Ooh. Oh, what was it? Oh, splash from the logo. Oh, she was going to be nervous going in, obviously with history on the line. Everybody's expecting her to do this. The entire arena is there to watch her break this record. Maybe she'll overthink it just a little bit. Maybe she'll be a little gun shy. Maybe she'll brick a couple because it's such a big night. Uh Uh-uh. First 12 points, I think, the Iowa Hawkeyes scored in that game. She scored, and she splashes that thing. Then, it's not just the women's record, AJ. No, no, no. With the way she plays... And the points that she puts up, and she doesn't even shoot the ball 40, 50 times a game. She's just a, she's a playing ball. With Unbelievable way she's, passer. Unbelievable yeah. so good. passer. We're talking triple doubles happening all night. So she's not just popping shot and every single time she gets the rock either. She's picking up a lot of other stats in the way she's contributing, but she'll score 30, 40 a mm-hmm. game. She can get the all-time scoring record for D1 basketball as a whole from Pistol Pete Maravich, who wasn't able to shoot threes. True. Which people Average 44 a game with no threes. How does he do that? Now who's he playing again? I mean, then he was you, shooting 40 times a game too. Yeah, well, yeah. so you can get uh, into nonetheless. Go. There's people that are negative about it. It's historic. With all that being said, that motherfucker hasn't been top for a long time, and now we got a stone cold dog in Iowa that was able to do it. Listen to this and watch this. She ties it with that one. This. For college basketball history. Splash, dude. Great call by Gus Johnson. Great timing by Gus Johnson. And she splashes that. Whenever you talk about standing at the free throw line, that's literally Caitlin Clark as a five-year-old, as a Mm six-year-old, with the ball, with the hoop, literally an entire arena in world going, what are you going to do? And she splashes that thing. It's like in the head, she's mentally... She's savage. Like, Caitlin Clark is... She's, that's why I'm so pumped she's coming to Indianapolis. Yep. She's the real deal. She's a fun athlete to watch, man. She really is, AJ. Oh, yeah. I, I'm pumped she's coming to Indianapolis because it's not that far of a drive for me to, to take my kids and go over there and watch. It, it will be... Uh, this NCAA, the tournament this year is going to be awesome because all this stuff is such a big deal and it matters and all these things. But we all know. We remember what happens in the tournament. We remember... Men's oh, or women's sports. What do you do in the tournament? Oh, this is a high state. Oh, no, I don't care about that. Oh, about it's a high state. state. That mindset. Yeah. Uh, it's like when people get excited about winning their conference or whatever. I'm like, that's awesome. Clap it up. We should be happy. But all that matters is what we do in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Well, and so I, I think this is something that, you know, Caitlin Clark has had to face a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, there's a lot of supporters of Caitlin Clark, and you can tally us into that particular list and have been for a long time. But on your way to the top of the mountain, you know, there's going to be a lot of skeptics and things that are being said. I didn't even realize that Ohio State people were going to be some of those people because they won the Big Ten, I guess. Mm-hmm. They, the Ohio regular State, season, yeah. they, they won the, uh, the Big Ten regular season. See, now there's a Big Ten tournament, too, in basketball. So it's like, all right. Well, always yeah, well you, Buckeyes fans were telling me, you know, well, who won the Big Ten, Pat? Just, just, just yeah. tell me who won the Big Ten. And I respect and appreciate that. And they said a flop actually led to those two free yeah. throws. Well, 
thought of that. Yeah. That's Absolutely. what people were saying. Not like the whole story, you know, of catching Pistol Pete, which right. nobody has been able to do, uh, obviously. 56 years. All they were saying was, yeah, what about the flop, though? Who won the Big Ten? Which mm-hmm. I respect and appreciate. But obviously, Ohio State Buckeyes fans aren't the only ones that were kind of her skeptics. There's been a lot of others. And all they're saying is, she's got to win in March. Mm-hmm. She's got to win in the tournament. Ty Schmidt, our Iowa Hawkeye representative, Does this team have a chance to win in the tournament? Do you know more than I do about how the women's college basketball March Madness goes? And what do you see from the team? Uh, I probably don't know more than you do, but I have. I don't know much is what I'm saying. But I probably have watched. uh, I've watched almost every single women's game this year. Uh, First and foremost, just the fact that she actually is from Iowa and she's not. She didn't go to Iowa from like Illinois or Ohio or whatever. Like. I do have like immense pride in the fact that an Iowan is the one that broke this record. Like it's really fucking cool. It is like the fact that if you'd have told me however many years ago that like Travis Scott would be at Carver Hawkeye Arena watching Caitlin Clark break this record, like that's unfathomable. It's crazy. Like the reach that she has and what she's done for the women's game. So it does kind of suck that it's getting picked at from all these different it's gonna people. Happen, but it's going to happen, obviously, especially with, at, with how much we're, we're talking about it, and rightfully so. Like, I mean, I think Hembo and Greeny talked about it this morning. Like, they went through all of, like, the, the records in professional sports and sports in general about, like, how long it took for those to get broken and how, like, people didn't – like, this is a record that people didn't think would ever get broken. It's been 56 years, like, since he said it. Like, it and, – and it probably will never be broken again. I mean, maybe, who knows, we'll see, but – I don't think as a whole they're as talented as they were last year, but as we've seen in the tournament, like if Caitlin Clark plays the way she did last tournament when she kind of introduced herself to everyone, like they can win it all. She's, because she's awesome to watch. She is. Yeah. And and like you mentioned, like basketball is one of those things where like, yeah, she might not shoot it forty times a game. She might not be scoring fifty a game, but like she is accounting for points on every possession because she is an unbelievable passer. Like, she can get other, her teammates involved. So, like, it always kind of comes down to that. Obviously, she's going to be keyed big time. Is she still going to score 25 plus, plus points per game? Absolutely. But it's, it's going to, like, they need their other girls to, when she's driving to the lane and they have girls who have open looks for three, like, they need those girls to knock those down. Um, if she plays the way she has been playing, like, there's no reason they shouldn't be in the final four or have a chance to win it all but i haven't watched enough of these other teams to know like you know obviously there are there are studs in women's college basketball everywhere it's not just caitlin clark like that's kind of the the cool thing about women's basketball as a whole now it's like i i think i could name more like premier women's players right now in college than i could men well phil posky Phil Posky, yeah. Phil, is, that, is, that the player Phil, that, is that the player that got the cap? Almost yeah. died. Yeah. Flip Cops yeah. cut in half. Yeah. Phil, yeah. I almost got people, you know, people come out saying people thank should get arrested. That, thank yeah. God that kid's still alive. He is. He, he windmill. It was sick. It, it was, was sick. sick. Yeah. Nobody was talking about how sick the dunk was. No, they're just because talking everybody's about talking about it. Yeah, his, that was a bummer for him. Reaction. That is a bummer. It was such a good, it I, was such a good dunk. I was kind of bummed off for him. Down at the bottom, obviously, we've seen it a thousand times on the internet. We were not live whenever this entire conversation took place, but that man right there got assaulted. Cut right, in half. Right God. there in the middle of that court. Okay, barely. Yeah. Now, they beat Duke. It's Wake Forest. It's in Wake Forest. Small campus. Yep. Mm-hmm. Very proud campus. Mm-hmm. Close schools. I think, yeah, in North Carolina, obviously, Duke for however long, been the big bad wolf. You get a massive win like that. Boys get excited. Fans get excited. Ladies get excited. Everybody what? sprints on there, and the court storm happens quickly. You know, very excited. Full Posky situation takes mm-hmm. place. Right. Mm-hmm. Really survived. And now full conversation is, should this be allowed anywhere? Well... Nobody has deemed it completely illegal, although I think it is, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Caleb Presley, who actually used to go hunt mm-hmm. storming situations, oh, yeah. was actually arrested one time True. for doing it. So I think this hasn't been something that's necessarily been like promoted, but it has been something that has happened in the history of sport. But now the security guards are better than they've ever been. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They had a practice after the Phil Bosky situation yep. where he almost brought a broken ankle. They've been working on it. So three, okay. two, one. Mm. Buzzer, whoa, get out there. Oh, yeah, we won. We just beat Duke. Uh-uh, you didn't. Not today. Mm-mm. Go the other way. So, yellow shirts are getting ready yep. all around yeah, town always. until there's an official public ruling. Good luck. 8,000 people decided to storm the court. Good luck.
<laughs> yeah, they're running right at you. You're running sideways. Look at the leverage that they don't have, by yeah. the way. Well, they you... don't have any. They're running this way while the crowd's coming this way. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe there'll be like scores tables that maybe slowed down. You know, yeah, maybe they're sure. a little bit Elevate of uh, courts. Mm -hmm. elevated courts, things like that. Federal slowed prison. down a little bit. So you can maybe bop them. Yeah, there's some people death thinking. Death penalty. Yep. Yep. There's some people saying that maybe not that one. Well, but definitely. 15 to 20 for sure. electric fence up or something maybe. Maybe, yeah. maybe an electric fence. Maybe that is a, a thing. A moat. Oh, that'd be sweet. Moat would be cool. Very tough. I've looked into it. Very yeah. tough. Very <laughs> tough. Yeah, these so maybe not out. moat. These schools got it. I mean, they. they so much it. money. Yeah. Anyways, I'm happy the college basketball people have to figure that out because I think we speak for the football community in this particular aspect, not all of them. Like, field storming is going to exist forever. Oh, like, yeah. this, this is going to exist in football forever. Yep. And I know it's a different conversation because there's a lot more space, 53 and a third wide at least for the field, 120, and, you know, you can get out of there. I was down in Louisville when Louisville stormed the field whenever they beat our West Virginia team on a Thursday night football team uh, game. I almost saw a teammate get into it with mm -hmm. a yep. mm -hmm. uh, sprinter oh. on the field. And in that moment, I actually was like, oh, this is really – this could get bad, I thought to myself. Good on fan. Yep. Adjusted course. Okay. okay. Goes different way. Nice. You know, kind of gets out of way. We get off field. We're all good. I think that's normally how it's gone. So whenever Caitlin Clark gets run into in basketball. At Ohio State. At Ohio State. Of course. Shouldn't have your phone. I mean, honestly, if you're storming the court and you're filming yourself, then you should be arrested. you got to have some awareness. Wow. Head on a swivel. Okay. So, you, so you're saying, and I'm not, I'm not rolling on the college basketball world because – you, that's for them the rule. Yep. Football, it's always going to happen. Mm -hmm. no There's more what. room, and I think people understand and acknowledge, like, yeah, need to kind of sticker, get around other team, celebrate with right. our team, though, yeah. which is a big part of it. Much bigger space, too. You can, you know, basketball courts, obviously, much smaller. Fans also than realize that. you don't want to run into a helmet. Yeah, pads. What pads. do you think they're going to do over there in the basketball world? I see the security practicing. They're going to need a little bit more of that. That's first day. That That's is first day. Yeah. Well, Until the security is prepared to no. knock students out and put them in the hospital. So, like, when that initial wave comes out and they kind of make their red, ro uh, red rover chain yep. and they start breaking college kids' noses and, like, putting them down, knocking them out, it's n it's never going to They have to watch ever. 300. Yeah, but, like, yeah. who, the security people? Yeah. yeah, it has to be the same feeling when all the horses are coming. Ha oh, yeah. Him shield. Ha him shield, yeah. Him shield. Ha shield would get it done if they gave them riot shields. Yeah. <laughs> Cattle prods. And, and, and they can give them yeah. the batons, too, so that if they yeah, do Yeah, but we've come seen some people that carry some things that they shouldn't carry, and it weighs them down. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Remember, sure. we've seen some people with some big flags at some of these yeah, games, these and it's like the flags are beating yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. the people that are running. Those shields, I those if if it was real riot shields, I think those are pretty heavy, uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. But those what do you think shields. they're going to do in basketball? You think that's what they're going to do? What do you think they're going to do? You it, can't that, stop it. I think they're. I don't know how they're going You can't. They'll des I think they'll designate an area. Yeah, to go the other way. Yeah. I was thinking that too, but then you've got to be prepared in that area every single night, even though it might not happen. So I guess like that's a whole thing you got to think this about. This wouldn't happen yeah. until like the final four in the tournament though, right? Because they're neutral site games. You're not going to storm. Like say there's an upset. No. They don't have enough people there to storm the court early on. Oh, no. oh and fi do they? In the no. lead eight? I don't think no. so. No. Never. No, no, no. Never. No, it'll only be it's at done for home the courts. Yeah. yeah. No, it's still yeah. conference. Yeah, conference tournament isn't home either. Yeah. No. no. Okay, so they got time to think of this yeah. mm -hmm. figure it out on this. You can't stop it. You can't stop them. If the people want to come awesome. down, they're Come on, bro. It's Maybe like, no more buzzer like, beaters. You have to sacrifice a few people early on. A few people might get their head bashed in, but then if the rest follow, you're good. Part of college. Like, so what are you saying? You're for it or against it? Because you're saying, you're saying you're bashing heads. Oh, I think you could. I, I think it should be allowed, yeah. Yeah, I think I fall on that side as well, but I'm not in the college basketball world. If they storm the court, they should have the away team or whoever it is that get them out of there. just have them. Yeah, go behind the scores table. Hey, you guys aren't shaking hands. Like just get just get the fuck off the court. That's the easiest way to fix it. We'll shake hands afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Or 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 don't. guess what? You know, we don't have to shake hands. Like that's not the end of the world. Let's go or, shake their hands. Or maybe well, just you unless know, someone says that. If you're seven foot, maybe don't get sawed in half by a <laughs> four foot girl. Or you let oh, yeah, him. you talk about Phil Phil Pasky. Pasky. Talk about Phil He didn't even get tested. Wait, well, like after really? all that, he, nothing, no, like just nothing got tested. Like he, he's okay. They just lost a big game. Think the people that are going off the field or off the court. He didn't need a test. The died. reason why the field is being stormed is because how terrible of a feeling you are currently having. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a big game. It's a big upset. You probably derailed somebody's life. You know, like that is what a storming moment is like. 
So you can see how those people are certainly in emotional roller coasters, which is why there's always been seemingly an understanding between Stormer and Visitor Player, maybe a yell, right? Mm -hmm. Gonna have to handle that, maybe a yell, but an avoidance completely, almost. So like the person that was filming themselves and hit Caitlin Clark and although that one was, you know, people judged how it was and mm -hmm. everything like that. There's no way you're thinking blindside you're gonna get hit ever. In the Phil Paskey one, it's like stormers, we do gotta be smart real. Yeah. You know absolutely. what I mean? You gotta, you, you gotta avoid you the see old buddy sprint off the court or in the very beginning of that clip, who wasn't the Duke player? He sees it coming. He, right here, he sprints off the court. Yeah, top of left, yeah. Yeah. So it's like there has to be some cooth. I can see food. how it would be a bit scary if you're a Duke player and you feel the whole place just yes. surrounding. I can see how that'd be a bit worrisome. Well, yeah. that's what I'm saying with the college basketball. Like, I'm not in the college basketball world. I don't know how well, small it it's feels. About. This is what it's about, though. This is what they want. They want this. Mm -hmm. We need that. The clip of that. Wake Forest will use that forever. Yeah, we need to keep this type of feeling whenever universities win. Yeah. Like, you know, we need to keep this type of desire, this type of energy, this type of emotion mm -hmm. towards something because that's what is a part of college sport. The pageantry is how it's described, but really it's the passion of the fans. From my perception as somebody who's gotten a chance to travel around now and see some of the coolest things, it's like the pageantry, the tradition, the chants, everything – that's the motherfucking generations of, of families mm -hmm. that have been doing the same exact thing. And, like, you learn how to be a fan pretty much. And this is how you live. This is your life pretty much. That's why college uh, football is awesome. I assume that's how college basketball fans feel about college basketball as well. So I never enjoy the thought of wrangling that because that is what makes college sports special, I think, personally. You're not getting that type of situation you know, anywhere else in the United States of America. So we got to have some cooth here. Stormers can't be stupid. Right. Nope. Just okay. Educate them. Just educate the Stormers a little bit. Hey, have your have some awareness. Maybe, yeah, you're right. I don't know. You can't really funnel the fans. Okay, you can, you can enter the court from this side or right here. I don't know if you could do that either. Though. No, because you could promote. So I thought about this whenever it was during the break, but yeah, as I said, there, the it's like you could have a designated area where you got like a DJ and like the team is going to come speak to afterwards. Student section. Like a yeah. parking lot. Where are the but, student sections at? But like outside maybe. like in a, yeah. So everybody can go to an area. Mm -hmm. So you go away from the court as opposed to onto the court. Like everybody knows like, hey, we're meeting at blah, blah, yeah. blah. If a win happens and you kind of like create that as a tradition, how hard is that going to be to institute? That's oh, going to be well, – And then you've got to prepare every impossible. single fucking game. That's, gotta, yeah. that's the yeah. thing. It's like good luck reasoning with boozed up college kids if you beat Duke on your home court. Like that's the other thing. It's like how – a lot of these kids probably you, – you don't ever get to go down on the court. Like that's sweet. Like, hey, let's mm -hmm. go fucking down there and, you know, and I'm boozed up on top of it. So, yeah, like actually we're going to need you to turn around, walk slowly, slowly so we don't start a, you know, a big – Fracas going up the stairs, and then we'll we'll sit there like that. That is never going to happen. I was excited to see what word you pulled there. Fracas. Fracas was a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it means still, but in my mind, with uh, what are those clues? Context. Yep. Yep. I pieced it together. You're right. That would have been quite a fracas yeah. oh, in yeah. every single lane because then people would have been going over chairs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then those things fold. You know, you see people. I've seen oh, them at wrestling yeah. events. Oh, legs. Yeah. Oh, no. Jeez. I look over and I see somebody trying to climb. Right. Don't worry about it. I'm going to go over here. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then you got some 80 year old lady who's going there watching it, getting bumped and taking a header off. You so know, I don't concrete. know what the right answer is. We are coming from a perspective of not knowing the right answer, but we would just like the Stormers to have a little bit more cooth yeah. sure. for yeah. the situation. And the players. They'll get it. Be aware that the, storm, the court is going to get stormed. And You're talking not, about awareness. And get off the court. And if not, federal right. prison. See, I, we don't need that. We don't need more people in jail. We don't need more people yeah. scared to celebrate wins. We need more people celebrating stuff. Because that means they care. Yep. Yeah. But we got to care with a little yeah. bit of a brain. Mm -hmm. We can't be running into Phil Posky. It's That's really, fair. It's really can't great. be running into Phil Posky. Can't do I don't care if four days later he's putting one through his fucking legs yeah. and dunking it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We can't be running into him. Yeah. Just avoid him. Just avoid him. Jeez. I almost died. Full Posky. And then he gets an overalls oh, kid. Yeah. Gets, I mean, he's. I mean, if you're an overalls knees? kid, you got to drive that knee. How did he survive? It's almost the triple D, one and done this from guy. the first guy to the second oh. guy. This guy's a fucking hero. That guy coming off the bench, he's like, oh, Phil Posky's yeah. weak. I got to get to him. Peter Pan. Oh, and Shire. Coach was not <laughs> okay. happy. Yeah. Coach was <laughs> not happy. <laughs> 
Fox is not happy that's afterwards. That's pretty standard for his God, career. that's some tough. No, the best is this kid who, who's he got He got him. a cramp, I heard. I heard he got a cramp right there. The, the kid who's got him around his arm. Yeah, I heard he got cramped. That's why they were carrying him. I like actually it. love it. Carrying him off like he just got shelled on Omaha Beach trying yeah. to get him. You know, so I love it. I <laughs> love it. This took over the internet. It did. Big time. This took over the The conversation got very, very oh my God. heated. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, you could tell, like, college basketball players and coaches. And not all of them, obviously. <laughs> just the ones that I saw. And negativity hogs, publicity, obviously. But they were like, yeah, something's been having to happen about this for a long time. You could tell, like... That's why I say, like, I'm not in the college basketball world, so it's hard for me to give a legit opinion. But you can hear some players, ex-players, and coaches, like, it's about damn time. Mm -hmm. this, has been a, this has been a clusterfuck waiting to happen for a while because they don't have a lot of room. No. But hopefully college basketball will figure it out. But we need to keep college passion. That's right. We need to keep college sports passion. It's good for sport so. as a whole. Speaking of good as a whole, it's great being back. Life feels good. Yes. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the hell out of my time with my lovely, beautiful wife and my my daughter, dude. She grows so much every day. Oh, yeah. It's been so much fun watching, learning, living. I don't know how you were able to do that 10 times, as I say, with the amount of kids that you have. But I had a fantastic break. But it's great to be back chit-chatting about sports. AJ, phenomenal getting to see you once again on a TV screen. Even though you lost service there for a little bit as Mad Mel joined us. Tough. That was, hey, I tell you what, I did not expect the ending, but that was uh, beautiful, beautiful work by Mad Mel. We'll be trying to patch things up with Mad Mel as yep. draft season continues. Boys in the back, great work first day back. Everybody yeah, boys. Great work first day back, boys. Um, Toxic table, phenomenal job today, boys. Good to be back. Too, Look at us be taking back. a victory lap. Good to be home. Good to be back. Yeah. Look at us. Yeah. That's the problem with this show. Well, Self-righteous sons of bitches, <laughs> but it's hard not to. new tattoos? Well, yeah, new tattoos well, that's what I'm room? saying. It's hard not to whenever you got people like one half of the hammer down. God. Cowboys, Tony Diggs, Rishon. Thank, Thank you, Tony. Too. Sweet tech. Thank you, appreciate it. Looks super sweet. That's a, that's a Greek goddess, dude. Mm -hmm. Family. Seven hours. Seven hours. Right here, just like this. Yep. Yeah, that's good. That had to lay on the stomach. And con, man, con, that had to hurt. You got it like on one of the most sensitive spots, didn't you? Yeah, you got uh, right was, there on your tricep and your bicep. You got yeah, it on your penis. It was fine. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry. Can you tattoo the shaft? Oh, yeah. People uh, do that, You right? can do anything. People do the, the <laughs> thing through it. Yeah, the Prince yeah, Albert. Prince Albert. Oh, Prince Albert, yeah. Well, that's a piercing. That was wild when I heard about that. Mm -hmm. I said, excuse me? DJ Pauly D. <laughs> excuse me? What? Does, you he do, do, does he have that? First episode of Jersey Shore. Yep, he's gone. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how you battle through. That's some mental toughness that I don't think I'll ever have. Nope. But thanks to them for doing it, though. Showing yeah. us what's possible. That's right. Amen. Showing yeah. us what's possible. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, let's get the hell out of here. We'll be back tomorrow. I have the incredible opportunity right now to fly to do Monday Night hell Raw. Yeah. Speaking of the WWE, I have a little bit of an announcement to make. Uh, our show will be live. Let me make sure I get this right. Let me make sure I get this right. Please hold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Holding. They got a sweet name for it that describes it for exactly okay. what it's supposed okay. to be. Okay. Oh. We will be live at WWE World in Philadelphia the Friday before WrestleMania, okay. the Friday before the SmackDown, what? before WrestleMania. What? We'll be live from WWE World, which I believe is like a fan fest convention center type thing. It nice. is awesome. It is. All, yeah, we've gone to a couple in the past. Yeah. I don't know if they've always called it the WWE World, but it is. It's a convention, pretty much, and it is normally pretty packed. And uh, the energy should be immaculate. We cannot wait to get there. Very thankful for the WWE having us there. Oh yeah. Also very thankful for the WWE having a couple of the boys in WWE 2K24. Okay, here we go. Wrestling fans are pumped about you guys being in there. I saw that. Yeah. Wrestling fans are pumped. We'll see. Oh, wait, was that sarcasm? Yo, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Over break, yeah. I was on the good part of the internet. Yeah. Hey, that, 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 was, that is, I muted, I had to mute a bunch of them because, boy, it was Latin. They're coming from a place of love, so like uh, in okay. their fanhood right. and their passion. Understandable. So it's like, ah, I was like caught in a spot where it was like, want to defend the boys. Like, hey, this is, we're not taking it. There's no spots being taken. But also, I appreciate how pissed you are yeah. because you're rightful. Hey, I hear what you're saying. You want to wrestle as Bill Goldberg. I get it. We understand. I get we it. We completely I, understand. I'd rather play as Eugene, too. I don't know if he's in it, but I do know that there's obviously legends, and uh, I don't know how many or who it's going to be, but. We're going to win with you guys. Amen. Aren't we? Coming for the Amen. finishing everybody's story. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. Should be a good one. Bill Bird joins us at 1230. That should be electrifying. That, uh, Let's go.
Feels like every convo we have with Bill Burr, we've gotten a chance to chat with him a few times. We are all massive fans of Bill Burr. Yep. Mm -hmm. Massive fans. Love him. First 10 minutes, he has to remember that he doesn't hate us, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. I, th oh, I, I think he does, yeah. I think he thinks, you know, especially because who we are, how I am, how I operate, boy, I'm basically everything that Bill Burr would hate, you know? So then after about like eight to 10 minutes, he I think he realizes like, ah, oh, not a complete douchebag. I remember here. these guys. You know, like, I, yeah, I think that sometimes. Now, I don't know if we'll be able to get them, but they end up being like some of our best conversations of all time. Yep. Oh, yeah. Especially with him being on the dynasty, and he's a massive Patriot fan. In what you have said about the first three episodes, oh, yeah. how Patriot fans feel about it, I'll be excited to get kind of his take on what it is, how it is. And I saw some people on the internet say, you need to watch the rest of it, though. Yeah, no. Because you're a little early maybe saying that this thing is over. Definitely. And I think the th the first three are not, you know, the bones of it. I think the next seven should be Appetizer. great and all those other things that, you know, I do want to learn about that stinked f that stunk for New England will still be great to learn about. But if Bill Burr has seen men in the arena, I'd be interested to see what his two thoughts are because men in the arena is just about the Patriots, like the teams, the success, all that. The Brady documentary, Fluff. that was 10 episodes. Well, I mean, per, per, people but, also say that. And then the dynasty is much more in-depth than uh, about the bullshit. If they got Bill Burr in there, I'll, I'll be excited to listen yeah. to everything the guy says. I'm, you know. Yep. Yeah. Number 81's episode was very good, by the way. Okay. I can't say wait to see Say his name. Like Aaron Hernandez, yeah. always. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot to talk about up there. Oh, That's yeah. why I think a lot of people Tons. are excited about it. I'm um, chit-chat with Bill. Like, what did Bill, what was he pitched? What was he told? What does he think? You know? Like, yeah. we can ask oh, him yeah. all those things. Because I'm assuming it's going to do well, this dynasty. Oh, Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming yeah. a lot of people are going to watch this. Everybody's going to watch it. Because the people who don't like it are still going to watch it. Like, you Patriots fans, I I'm not going to sit on three and not watch the rest. I'm going to watch it. And I think Bill Burr's on tour. He's in Indiana, I believe, nice. coming up. Hell yeah. Okay. Which is good for the city of Indianapolis. Let's go. Something to do. We like that. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody seems to come through here. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. there's like, and, People, Adam Sandler sold this, sold this fucker out on a Tuesday. I think it was mm -hmm. a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Packed, Gamebridge Arena. You said it was an awesome show too. Awesome, all the way so to the good. roof, all the way to the roof. It was Man. packed out on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. Like if you do things in Indianapolis, people will be like, "Let's fucking yeah, go." Yeah, perfect. Huh? I don't have shit to do. Yeah, let's bingo. Go. <laughs> Let, let's go do that. So Chappelle. I think Bill. Yeah, Chappelle. Same thing. Blake Shelton show. Blake Shelton. Yeah. Stupid. He's back on the road again. Mm -hmm. yep. Honky tonk. Yeah, he's in Texas and Louisiana, I believe. Coming he, out. He's headed to Canada next, mm -hmm. I believe. Ooh. He's a showman. International. Oh, yeah, he, is. he is good. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. We'll be back tomorrow. It's been a fun day. Oh, let's check it. Let's check it. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got it. First one's in. All these are flat because we haven't yeah, touched been, them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We haven't touched them since. So I literally have not shot one. Come on. Oh. Oh. I look good. I was yeah. going to say. Right. That was good. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. How many? Yeah. How many we? Uh, how many five hundred dollar winners? Mm. First day back. First day back. First day back. Ten. Twenty five. So There'll be more. Twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty five. Five hundred dollar winners. We're off ten shows. It should be ten. That's good. Fifteen. Cut it in the middle. All right, we'll do 20. Okay. Bingo. Okay. No, 25. That was good, didn't it? You see how excited everybody got except for Tone and Connor. <laughs> well, AJ got excited even from Ohio, didn't you? I saw you puff the cigar a few times. Very excited for 25, yeah. Did you get any new cigars whenever you were on that cruise down there in the uh, Caribbean? I did not pick up any cigars while I was there. Oh, you did. It's illegal. Mm -hmm. That's why he is responding. Son way. of a bitch. What's we that? didn't go to Cuba or whatever. You went to Cuba. We didn't go to anywhere like or that. whatever. Cuba. Where'd you guys go? Where'd you, where was the Buckeye cruise well, this year? I, I got off the boat early, but uh, I was the only stop I was there was for uh, Turks and Caicos. Oh, how'd you get off? Nice, the boat? great place. Wow, I saw some photos. We did. Is everybody jacked on that? an Ohio cruise? It yeah. makes sense that everybody is jacked. Mm -hmm. oh. I saw General Bob Carpenter posted a photo, and every person in there was jacked. Mm -hmm. I didn't see you in there. Were you taking the picture? I was gone that when he took that. That was Key West, I believe. I was gone, but yeah, you're right. People are jacked out there. Okay, so did you take this? But you were gone already. You got off. How'd I was you get gone. off? I had to get, you know, nobody, my wife didn't even go on the boat. My brother came with me, you know, it's tough to, we need multiple drivers, multiple people to figure out the kid situation. Oh, so life, get back. life happens. So did sure. you, yeah. did you miss the musical performances? Uh, who, who was the musical performance? You know. Didn't P. Diddy and Meek Mill perform during right. the, they <laughs> <laughs> they've been in the news lately. Yeah, they certainly have. I thought for the Ohio State bug guy. They cruise. certainly <laughs> have. <laughs> Oh, what? How was that going was to end? Well, well, man, it's a very there's descriptive like, lawsuit. There's a lot, yeah. And uh -huh. then at the bottom, 
and, and I watched KFC's uh, Minuteman News on it or whatever. Mm-hmm. At the bottom, them just saying, like, who the name is redacted pretty much. Yeah. That's okay. wild. Is that how? I don't know. I mean, that, kind of, is that real? I don't know what's real and what isn't real, mm-hmm. but I want to let you know. That was a wild couple days on the internet. It Boom. was. I thought there was a new album out. There is, but not. But not. Yeah. Yeah. It was wild. It's crazy time. It is. 25 winners. Yeah, 25. $500 mm-hmm. on this beautiful Welcome Back Monday, March 4th, 2024. Now, people are going to remember today is the first day back from a two-week break that some people messaged and said felt like two months. And towards the end of it, we all were super-duper antsy to get back in here. But a day that will be remembered as the start of the most fun off-season we've ever had mm-hmm. in our entire life. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yes. Come on. Because not only are we going to be a WWE world, mm-hmm. but... I believe we're going to be opening day MLB Ooh. at a ballpark okay. somewhere. Love that. I believe Home Run Derby, we're going to be somewhere. Oh, okay. Hell yeah. I believe the draft, we're going to be up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to be doing a, I think, uh, I'm not saying it yet. I'm not saying it yet. Mm-hmm. That one has not been confirmed. Okay. Yeah, I know. Okay. Don't jinx it. We're trying to, we're trying to get the show to mm-hmm. make a move. things that are happening, AJ. Like, we're trying Keep to talk. do that. Yeah. That'll be fun. That'll be a good time. Oh, yeah. And that's like, shout out to ESPN. Yep. Shout out. Shout out to ESPN. Having the connections for all these things. Now, WWE would have happened. Regardless. But going to make it only better. Sure. Which we appreciate. WWE World. Friday before WrestleMania. Now, 25 winners. $500. Mm -hmm. All I got to do is make this shot for the people. Okay. Don't be a prick, Pat. You got it. You got it. This one's in. For Mad Mel. Nice. Oh, Up and down. Bingo. Bingo. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. We love you all so much. Thank you for the kind words while we were off. We hope you'll continue to rock with us. And when you stop, we'll completely understand. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. We're in this thing together. Team on me. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. Team. Goodbye.